<laughs> All right. Welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Today, we have my good friend Steven Jensen on the podcast. How you doing, my brother Steven? Oh, I'm doing good. How are you? I am fantastic. Enjoying uh, living life at home, making podcasts, working out. Can't complain, man. How you doing? I mean, I just had some of the best sex with myself. That is usually the best sex. You know what you want. And quarantine sex. Yeah. And with yourself. Yep. Yeah. Quarantine self sex. Yeah. Masturbatory quarantine sessions. Yep. I completed Pornhub. You completed it, huh? Yep. I never I haven't tried that one yet. That's a lot of uh that's a lot of video watching to do. Yep. <laughs> I think uh we should subtitle this one though, into the ginger. Into the ginger? <laughs> <laughs> You're always trying to fucking get me to agree to be ginger with you. And I keep telling you, I'm not fucking ginger. Strawberry blonde, you son of a bitch. Mm. Nobody wants any nobody wants any part of that, Steven. You I keep that it. ginger curse to yourself. All right, you trade coat. You tra- <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, man. No, I uh, I do got some strawberry blonde up in there though. I don't know, maybe a little bit with the beard going. I do look a little more ginger with the beard. It's always if the if the curtains match the drapes. Maybe. That's right. You know, that's right. That's the that's the dead giveaway. Is it? Yeah. 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 So how are you, Ben? Dude, I've been killing You're it. Looking man. good. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been hitting it every day, man. I could donate some of this for you. Could you? Yeah, I could use a little bit of body yeah. mass. Uh, <laughs> my skinny ass is just uh, <laughs> you know, no fat over here. But uh, yeah, I've been I've been I've been doing good, man. Actually, I've been really uh, enjoying life. Um, not having to work for the man all the goddamn time, and uh, just reading a lot and working out a lot, and so positive. Yeah, getting on my meditation <laughs> routine, eating healthy. I'm actually uh, working on like doing my whole super sober thing where I I don't even eat sugar or caffeine. And where does am, this more? Where does the self discipline come from? I can't find it. Uh, I don't know. I yeah. just try to better myself with uh, every day, right? Like, Love it. I, I don't know. I've, 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 I try to pick up some of these positive yeah, energies. Yeah, life you is good, well, man. Here. Life yeah. is good. It's all about a perception. It's That's all true. about uh, how you look at things, man. Not uh, not how you how you want things to be or like how things should be, but just like oh, oh things are, and that's cool. You know, there's nothing wrong with the world. Yeah. Well, like, you want there to be. with toddlers, it's hard. They're constantly tearing the house apart, so I it's bet. just like living in pure chaos at all times. Yeah, but it's awesome. How old are the How old are the toddlers right now? We are. Uh, Steven is three and a half. Uh, Theo is about to be twenty months. Oh yeah, yeah. Twenty months, man. Yeah. He's saying shark. That's his word of That's the week. That's his word? Yeah. He shark. has shark jammies, and he's like, shark. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so That's cool. So cool. Yeah. Man. And Steven's really smart now. I mean, like, he can have, like, full-on convos. Oh, really? Yeah, he could. Yeah, he's he's wild. That's awesome. What's he into? Monster Jam. Monster Jam? Oh, Trucks? Loves, yep. That shit is cool. Like, he pretends he's a Monster Jam when he's riding his bike. Like, <laughs> when he's running around the backyard, he's, like, you know, like, That's jumping around. So, uh, that, uh, I mean, yeah, he pretty much eat, eat, breathes, sleeps Monster Jam right now. I mean, but and then uh, dinosaurs, construction, anything, bulldozer, you know, excavator. And he says excavator and stuff. It blows me away. I was like, that's crazy. Yeah. Wear my excavator pants. I'm like, what? <laughs> so he has, he's got everything themed out. Sharks or, you know, <laughs> Monster Jam stuff. We've got about 20 now of the little, you know, Hot Wheel ones. So we're always on the lookout for the ones that we don't have. Some go missing. Um, I actually caught Theo throwing a couple in the toilet. Oh, no. So, and I've noticed it's backing up, flushing a little bit. So we might have a monster truck. We might have a monster truck in one of the toilets there. So, that sounds fun. Yeah, it's 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 wild, man. But it's yeah. a good time. Yeah, fucking two toddlers running around the house. That has got to be a friggin' handful, man. I have to say, I uh, I have enough problems just dealing with the dog at home. <laughs> Two fucking little monkeys running around. I don't know what I would do with that. Yeah. Well, actually, she just texted me, too, like, earlier, right before I came over here, and she's like, they're outside just burning some energy. And um, we got a garden going in the backyard, and so I planted a whole crap ton of cucumbers, I guess, like, too many, she said. So she's transplanting a few. Anyways, so she's doing that, and Steven's like, hey, there's a bird, but it was a dead bird. (laughs) And she's like, don't touch it. 
and yeah, he you know three and a half. He's been ha- apparently I'm the only one who could tell him not to do something, and he doesn't listen to mom very well, right? And so she's like, "Don't touch it, don't touch it." <laughs> Next thing you know, he's come walking over. He's got this yeah. dead bird in his hands. And he's like, "I want to take it to the bird store." <laughs> what <laughs> the bird store? <laughs> like like trying to get like a like a like a, a refund? exchange <laughs> exchange for a, a fresh bird. That's fucking hilarious. Yeah. I love kids' minds, man. That's, right. That's beautiful how they work right yep. there. And yeah. his jokes, his jokes of the day, um, whenever we lay down for like nap time or, or uh, you know, bedtime, he's like, Dad, you want to lay with me and have uh, silly time? I'm like, all right, what's up with that? And all of his jokes are just like, just word association. He'll just be like, camera, lights, bottle, poop. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you know, he just like closes it up with poop. <laughs> That's his like three and a half year old humor right now. It's great. Poop is always funny. It's true. I'm sorry, but uh, that'll never get old. We're but, just dumb monkeys, and poop is hilarious. <laughs> this is true. I, it was funny. He's doing all those too, and I'm like, so what do fish do in the water? Trying to just like precede him, like to get him to say poop, but he's just like, oh, they like to swim. Like he's giving me like the real answer, and I go, uh, uh-uh, uh, poop, and he's like, ah, ha, ha. I'm like <laughs> you got me, you know. Uh, so maybe next time uh, in the future we could have the little three and a half year old uh, get down for a minute. But oh yeah, he's dude. a riot, man. Oh yeah, bring it's him good. along, man. I'll do my best not to swear in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. P.S. Um, now would be a good time to pause and remove any children from your living room or around your phone. This isn't going to be a PC. <laughs> this is never PC. This is never fucking PC, man. <laughs> You know, I don't like to I don't like to put rules or restrictions on anybody's uh, thought processes or conversations. So we just roll here and, and yep. let whatever happens happens. And if people want to complain about it in the comments, I'm not going to read them. True. You've been watching your new uh, Rick and Morty's. The new new ones, yeah. like the what is it, six, and like, seven, and eight? Yeah. Of the season yeah. four, I, I have them. I haven't watched them. What? I haven't watched well, we can't them, talk man. about those then. Yeah, I know. I should have. I was just watching the uh, some of the older stuff, like some of the clips and shit like that, and like yep. weird, like off, off timed, like um, three to five minute shorts that they would put on Adult Swim. Yep, they're all over YouTube. They're, those are fucking great. Did you see the one where they do like a samurai style? Yeah, that one was killer. Yep, that was like the little teaser leading up to this. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was oh, just cool. like something to come out with before. What are we on? Six, seven, eight just came out. Yeah, season four. Well, well, without giving much away to you, like it's just like summer is becoming more sassy and like a, a much more like better character. Yeah, I love summer. Before just She's being kind of the side character, really side. She's emerging quite a bit in this. Uh, Good. These new ones, so that's fun. Yeah, so summer and um, Beth are fucking killer characters. Yeah. Like they're yeah. intelligent and smart asses, and yeah, they should definitely get more airtime. Summer is it's good, so I love that episode where they uh, go to the post-apocalyptic Mad Max world. Yeah, she just turns into this fucking gets dark gangster. Yeah, <laughs> she gets real dark. She's just like all these people that like live in that apocalyptic world. She's just like you're not dark enough for me. Yeah. I love that shit. Yeah, that's a great fucking episode, man. Oh man! And, and if you look up Easter eggs on Rick and Morty online, mm-hmm. dude, people are fucking crazy. First of all, that they are sitting there f- putting like frame by frame shots of rick and morty because that's how much fucking crazy shit's in the background oh i knew there was a lot of crazy stuff in the background but uh i was watching this guy's like uh, top 40 easter eggs from season four or season three i was like top 40 easter eggs from season (laughs) jeez yeah yeah there's a guy I, i wish i remembered his name to uh call him out and give him a little shout out but he does really good videos about the easter eggs he's got a good yeah. rick and morty channel blanking on his name hard but there's a good one out there i'm sure it's one of the main ones if you looked it up yeah um he's he's pretty thorough with all the uh because there is there's so many not only easter eggs but there's so much allusions to this show and that show and this thing and just all the pop culture are like little nuggets you uh, know it's, it's it doesn't feel everywhere. like a pop culture show yeah that's what they do a really good job of. It doesn't feel like a a pop culture show, but it is. Oh yeah. Because of all the science, you know, all the crazy characters, and that's what I've always loved about it, like the crazy aliens that you never see in anything else, but that it's like mimicking Indiana Jones, but they're aliens. You know what I mean? Like or whatever it yeah. is. So, but uh, I'm super nerdy for it. I got all the. I bought myself all the comics for uh, the Christmas. Comics are great. Yeah. 
They are uh, great. Everyone that exists. Oh, really? Know. Oh, yeah. Oh, Angela's just... got to see that shit. She loves the fucking comic books. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm only missing probably a couple of ish- issues at this point. I, I bought one in March, so they come out like monthly or whatever. Oh, okay. But yeah, I'm like I'm a dad now, and I love Rick and Morty, so I like just wear Rick and Morty socks and Rick and Morty hats, and <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got a pickle pickle Rick mug, you know, for my coffee. So it's my thing, man. I love it. You got to be the coolest dad in the world, man. Your kids got to love you. You're just a big fucking kid yourself. I know you personally. Yep. You're a goddamn dork. Yeah. And it's got to be so much fun for your kids to just be hanging out with you all the time, because I mean, you just don't take anything seriously and. You just like to have fun, so that's got to just be the perfect fucking dad. It's a good time. Yeah, I bet. Like I every bet. every day, they get a little bit older and smarter, and like more. I call it evolving. You know, like Pokemon's. Yeah. Oh yeah. You, you feed them enough rare candy, <laughs> they uh, like kind of just like they level up a little more, and they get like a new technique or something, or they like all of a sudden can th- huck something at you really hard. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, kids grow so freaking fast, it, man. It, I I fucking I it's I watch, terrifying. I got to watch Anthony's kids grow up, and they are just just shooting up like rockets man they're teenagers now half of them it's crazy i feel like just like how technology is like exponentially happening like remember gosh we got we had the computer 95 that was like our first at home and everyone it was like a family computer right yeah now everyone has their own personal device there's ipads there's phones there's this so technology is is growing that fast and i feel like our kids are getting exponentially smarter oh yeah right like so steven's already he speaks three he's doing three languages already is he doing english mandarin and and and, uh spanish that's smart and speaks really well english i don't i don't do enough spanish with him but he can count you know count to 10 in spanish he learns he knows his colors in spanish now yeah and i'm like so what do we do for kindergarten i mean like three and a half and he's working on counting to 100 in english (laughs) <laughs> like knows we count by tens, yeah, right to a hundred. So he knows the patterns now. Already it's three and a half, and I'm not saying he's like some kind of prodigy. I think all kids are kind of like learning so much faster now because of just we have so much information streamlined since I was five. Oh yeah, what, so ninety two. It's a totally different world. Yeah, I mean, it's... you look anything you want up on the internet, and it's just there at the touch of a button. Mm-hmm. And uh, the kids are born into a world with touchscreen cell phones and touchscreen tablets and shit like that and yeah like they just that's just and that's the, just how the world works to them Theo's this isn't a magical device this is just yeah. expected to this is how everything works it's not locked out even theo finds it knows yeah. how to hit the home screen he knows what youtube looks like and uh hits it and it's usually algor it got the algorithms it, for the kids you know is that the 20 month old yeah yeah and he'll just find you know his sim- super simple songs or you know whatever cartoon character that he likes He's clicking on, he's rolling. That's crazy. I mean, we try to keep him off the iPads. Yeah. But it's kind of one of those things that, like, they like it. It's like a treat to them, I guess. Yeah. Um, But, you know, we like to, if we're going to do TV, sit farther away from the TV like you normally would. We don't want him holding this thing up to their face. But, like, really early in the morning when you're still, I'm still getting my stretch on or starting the coffee, like, he finds it and... Yeah, yeah, they go sit in the corner like with their little iPad. Kids watching cartoons ain't gonna hurt nothing. Yeah, yeah. It's just the iPad. I mean, I guess it's funny, uh, Joanna. You know, it's just when they're holding it this close to their face. Yeah, it's probably not the best for their eyeballs. Yeah, the the blue light inside of there. Yeah, that uh, kind of works with the the phone to kind of soften yeah. the tone or whatever. It's something about that that is supposed to like increase eye strain, and right. like it. Like I don't know, it's not that great for you. That's why they have that that dark mode on right. your cell phone at night. Which I like it can you can feel the difference. Yeah, you can, like, physically it feel softens the everything. Yeah, yeah you, it's not so it fucking trigger shit in the back. Is I think it's like I don't know some kind of like increase of anxiety slightly or something like that with all that fucking white shit blasting you right, right. in the face. And they're little; they don't know how to handle it yet. No, they don't yeah. know how to deal with any of that shit. Yeah, and the other behavioral thing though too is like they'll fight over it. Or when you t- finally tell him to like put it away, he really gets upset about it. Versus like just turning off the TV is not that big of a deal to him, mm-hmm. to to either of them. But the second that you go like, "Hey, give me the iPad," I think it's that like possessing something, plus 
TV entertainment and like you're taking it out of their hands, it adds this whole another layer of the, like you're taking it from them. Yeah. So they like freak out a little bit. Well, plus you push the thing mm -hmm. and then it does a little sparkle jazz. Sparkle and jazz. Yeah. And it's like fucking <laughs> triggers all this fucking dopamine in your brain. And right, it's like, right. it's a little drug. It's a little digital drug. And we that's never all had it. Yeah. That's... We were, so it's like, it's weird being a dad now. Yeah. It's to, to watch it happen because you've heard about it too. Because I've heard people like, oh, it's such a weird world now with iPads and this, that, and the other. Now I have kids who are grabbing it. So I still don't even know how I really feel about it, you know, but it's part of their world. It's part of their world. You can't keep it from them. That's for sure. That that's would, true. that would just so uh, what, cripple them in the world. What age is, what age do you get a cell phone? I have a nephew that's eight. I think he got his last year, even a little before turning eight. I, if I was a parent in this environment, this digital environment where, kids create this digital ego and this digital footprint hella hard and like they associate themselves with that mm -hmm. um i would i would really push to not let my kids have i mean i don't have fucking kids but i mean uh logically i'd probably wait till like high school like let them get out of middle school and like once they're done with eighth grade and they become a freshman in high school it's like all right you're kind of understanding how to deal with the bullying thing now, the and, <laughs> you know, and like, because kids are fucking assholes. They don't know how to behave, right? And they don't mean it. I right? don't know how to behave. Like, I, I, <laughs> I got fucked with growing up, right? Like, uh, a lot. And, uh, and like, I run into people later and they're just like, hey, sorry for fucking with you, you know? Like, and I'm just like, yeah, no problem, man. I know we didn't know what we were doing. We were just kids. Sorry for breaking your fucking nose or whatever I did when you <laughs> fucked with me. Um, you know, like, uh, it's just, uh. Kids don't know what the fuck they're doing. And so with this new technology, they are just harassing each other and they're picking on each other. And it turns into this whole obsessive culture mm -hmm. and um, with the social media and like the cell phone immediately means they're going to have social media going on. You know, like they're going to they're going to fucking figure it out. Well, if I was 12 with a phone, you know, I probably would have sent a dick pic pretty much first thing. Instantaneously, right? It's like you're a boy. You're going to. Just send it to your Johnson the, to the whole world. That's just illegal now, <laughs> right? They got they they uh they made that shit sexual harassment or whatever indecent oh, really? exposure. Yeah, you can't you can't be sending dick pics. That you, some it's some like the first thing like we would have been doing the goat and the and the yeah. nuts and the fruit basket and all that. Like oh yeah, it's pretty much the first thing that an email <laughs> with a piece Look of technology. At my balls. <laughs> That's exactly what we do. And speaking of, have you heard of the nutscaping? The the nutscaping. You never. Yeah. No, 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 no. Let's go into so, that. So Netscaping, you could do on a quick Google search, but basically it's a, uh, yeah, it's finding like beautiful backdrops of, <laughs> <laughs> you never heard of this? No. Dude, it is like the most, it's a phenomenon that like needs to come back. I, it kind of started, I think it caught wind and then it kind of went away, but I just feel like it's some of the best <laughs> You just... Yeah, you get uh, so for the audience who's not saying what is going on over here. Uh, you know, you go on a nice nature hike. You find a beautiful scenery, and you know, have a sunset going on. You just drop your nutsack kind of over the over the top of the camera as it's going on. So it's kind of got that nutsack eclipse going on. Are you, are you able to pull it up? I'll pull up the image. Yes, <laughs> this is the Google image search. I don't think we can get in trouble for that, right? Uh, no, I nutscaping, mean, unbelievable, <laughs> you guys. I did not know that was a fucking thing. So that's you know, ridiculous. <laughs> I forgot why I even brought. We were talking about. Oh yeah, self. Okay, I love how it just kind of like goes one to the other. To the other. I don't know, how did we get to nutscaping? But now we all know about it and. You know, um, we'll put my phone number in the in the in the uh, comments or something. And I want I want your best net your Everyone's best nutscapes. <laughs> Steven, your nutscape. Or look me up on Facebook. So, Jesus. that's hilarious. With that being said, I get sick joy. You know, I'm sure you know. I was sending uh, really messed up videos and and. Uh, oh, I definitely, I definitely photos know. to you. My girlfriend is convinced that you're my gay lover because you send me so much. <laughs> <laughs> sexual fucking stuff it's just like <laughs> terrible shit like balls and ass that you send me she's like why are you getting these pictures yeah. from some <laughs> from someone and i was just like it's steven she goes he wants your dick so bad i know it <laughs> i won't name names here but yeah there was definitely another one of our fellow tech uh one of our fellow tech uh you know colleagues and he <laughs> he was watching one and he goes so my wife just asked me who's why I'm wa a why I'm watching that, 
and then B, who hey. sent it to me. And then I had to explain to her you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you oh. know, it was, um, yeah, he's like, well, so this is uh, one of my bosses. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, uh, I'm pretty sure we, we we have a pact that if either of us die or whatever, that we have to go, like, put a drill through each other's hard drives, like, find your cell phones, just make sure Jesus. that, like, no one can access it. This is for quite a few people. They're like, All yeah, I don't want my shit. significant other to ever see our chat thread. <laughs> I show uh, An- I show Angela all the horrible shit we talk about. She goes, "What the fuck is wrong with you guys? Why would you think that's funny?" We go, "It's fucking hilarious." I don't know what you're talking about. And it, yeah, with Anthony too, it got yeah. to the point that uh, he just was like, "I always share it with Casey." So we just made a group chat because he's like, <laughs> "It's just saving me a step." I just copy and paste yeah. it over to her. So I was like, "Oh, this is great." And then actually, she she came in pretty hot and heavy with some good ones. Like well, Casey, right don't fuck around. No, I was proud. She is also from Stockton. She yeah, is not you guys, one to mess with. You guys are a good good click of uh got the good humor. Oh yeah. Yeah, the dark humor. That's what it is. We just don't give a shit, man. You know, the the worse the worse the joke is and the more offensive the joke is, yep. it's probably going to make us laugh harder. I'm all about dark humor, Louis CK and like uh that. even I guess um oh, I'm so bad with names. The other ginger fuck. Um the oh. other ginger fuck. Oh, God damn it. Bill Burr. Oh, yeah. I guess he is ginger. He's ginger. Lucy K is. I mean, Louis C.K. is really dark, but Bill Burr can get dark. I like that. And, and so it, it is. I think it is something to do with the soullessness of the gingers, you know? Angela don't like Bill Burr. <laughs> oh, why is that? Oh, he gets pretty sexist, you know? He just. Oh, calls, it? Yeah, he's, he's kind of. He kind of has that get the fuck in the kitchen and make me a sandwich kind of attitude oh, about but I love everything. It. Yeah. And it's like he's fucking joking. You know he's fucking joking, right? Like, but. Ah, uh, she just goes, that's not fucking funny. I go, it's, it's kind of funny. <laughs> well, like, uh, I know you know for the viewers, so I have a, a Taiwanese, you know, wife, and so they still very much have that, like, you know, servitude, whatever, for your yeah. man and all that, and I like to play those, you know, I do those jokes all the time. She she thinks it's funny. Yeah. Got our nice pair of shorts from William Control, shout out, uh, with that say, yes, sir, <laughs> <laughs> across her butt cheeks, so it's great. <laughs> That's kind of like our joke, too. I'm like, do this, this, that, and the other show, just be like, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure we'll yeah. get some comments for that one. Oh, of course. But, People are gonna get their panties in a bunch over whatever you fucking say nowadays. You yeah. don't worry about it. You she know? takes a lot of pride though, taking care of the family, getting the boys fed. Yeah. You know, m- you know, making it happen. So we don't we don't meet take it seriously. You know, women yeah. are equal to men. We're the same fucking thing. You know, it's just yep. we got these different weird bodies, and it's fucking funny. And then there's these standards, and then we can joke about it. Absolutely. And it's like if you're not joking about it, what are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? The house Make would fun of everything. To, to her credit, the house would fall apart without her. There's of course. No, yeah. It's just total glue. 100%. Yeah. So those guys are, don't listen to her good. Then I got to come home and just lay down the law. But man, she's she's running out. She's pretty much running everything from A to Z. You know? Uh, I, I forget who I was listening to. But I was listening to some stand-up comedy. And I think it was Louis C.K. But uh, he was just like, I got I got home from work. And the, the wife says, you just get in there and you beat his fucking ass. You know? He, he did yep. this and this and this. And he just comes in and he's just like, I mean, I wasn't even here for any of this, so I have no dog in the fight. He's just right. like, uh, come on. I guess I got to yep. whoop your ass. Yeah. It's kind of <laughs> like. I, why? It reminds you me of the, fucking why. The, like that opening scene of like number one Game of Thrones. Yeah. Where they like take the guy out and he's like the guy who's going to give the judgment has to do the punishment. Yeah. And he like beheads the guy. And it's kind of like, we have the rules. That's why I feel like I come in and I'm like, it's almost like, son, I love you, but I have to beat you. <laughs> you know? Uh, and, and then he cries for a little bit and he gets his butt cheeks, you know, spanked. And yeah. then we hug it out later, you yeah. know, get back to life. Get then back make, to life. Make him go say sorry to mom. That's right. So Consequences are important. And that yeah. creates discipline and respect in your fucking environment, man. You know? Yep. It's like, I, I don't agree with the whole don't, like discipline your kids thing or just put them in the fucking corner for timeouts it's like that's right. a little monkey person man they're gonna start manipulating your dumb fucking pussy rules you know right. that right like right. that's not a mutual respect thing he can't break all your shit and like do dumb stuff to you and then not have real consequences for their actions totally and yeah. i make him i make him put his hand, own hand out 
Yeah. You know, just yeah, like, did you touch the things that you did? And then I'm waiting for him. Like, you need to put your hand out. And he's kind of crying. I'm like, put your hand out. Yep. You're going to get a smack on it. That's fun. Yeah. I mean, not I mean, fun, but smart. Yeah. It's like, it, that's, it's a really good way to go about it. And he, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, I don't like beating children any more than I have to. Nobody wants to, f- nobody wants to fucking do that. That's, <laughs> it sucks. It's literally yeah. as an adult, you know, looking back on that whole, like, this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. It, that, for real. It I is. mean, like who wants to do that to their fucking baby? You know, like. But you got to keep that shithead in line yep. or they're going to just start getting oh, unruly. They're already strong enough that, like, if she tries to spank him or something, yeah. it's, she's just going to hurt herself. Like, yeah. they don't think it hurts. Yeah. They just kind of laugh about it. So we do have some nice bamboo switches, though, out in the back. Ha! So, you know, that's that's what they grew up with, though. You know, that's what she grew up with and her her uncles and everything. Um, they give them a little little whip with the that bamboo. Woo! Yeah. Don't fucking we, misbehave. I used to have a paddle. My dad had a paddle yeah. that he got in like, it looked like a geisha doll, but it was like a wooden paddle and he, he'd hang it over me and my little brother's door every night just to <laughs> remind us that we fucked off and that we were going to get our asses beat. <laughs> then then he started like, it started getting weird though because like he was starting to like drill holes in it so it was like more aerodynamic. Nice. <laughs> and there, I forget what, it, I forget the situation, but Phil was, uh, he's my little brother and he's like really fucking with me hard or whatever. And my dad, it was kind of like that situation, that Game of Thrones situation where he's like, do you think he deserves a spanking, Stephen? I was like, yeah. He's like, well, I'm going to let you spank him. <laughs> so he's like, but, you know, if down the line, you do something to mess with him, he's going to spank you back. So think about, like, how hard you want to do it, right? Yeah. Bro, I hit him so <laughs> fucking hard. His ass cheeks were bleeding, dude. I mean, yeah, right. It's I, your I, brother. Yeah, dude. Unloaded. Oh, <laughs> tell me and my brother were growing up. Dude, we beat the fuck out of each other was growing Ch- up. I forget was Chad older or younger. I'm the oldest. Yeah, okay. Chad's the so. Chad's the middle kid, and then we have Eric, who's like ten years younger than me. Okay, but and so you guys probably didn't really fight the ten year old. No, no, we didn't fight with it. We tortured the ten year old. We fucked him. <laughs> Sorry, Eric. I love you, man. I really do love you, bro. Uh, no, we were kids. We didn't know what we were doing, and we were just like you know trying to just fucking life is complex. So yeah, as uh, no, as teenagers and stuff, yeah, we totally picked on our little brother Eric and tortured that little kid. But we also like tried to include him in the group and like ten years is little, tough though. Teach him little shithead moves, right? Yeah, so like my gap. friends would come over and I'd be like, uh, Eric, go get the door, and that means answer the door and say, Hey, how's it going? Bam, right in the balls, <laughs> and it's just like that's how you get. <laughs> That's how you got introduced to the Froberg house. That's how you get introduced to the house. You learn. Eric's going to punch you in the balls. We taught him to punch you in the balls. You know, like. <laughs> Dude, he, he does it to me. people he's not supposed to, you know, like adults that come over see, fucking hang out with my folks or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so I mean. They're just like, why did the kid just hit me in the balls? <laughs> he's five. You guys are 15. Yeah, exactly. That's great. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, no. So that was weird. Uh, like trying to include him, but like also not be super inappropriate we're like we're experimenting with drugs right. we're teenagers right so uh you know we, we didn't want to like i don't know we fucked that kid up too we're all fucked up <laughs> everybody's fucked up you know chad and i uh chad and i grew up just beating the living hell out of each other oh, right I, it, yeah. well, I was uh i was our favorite one to bring up uh was like the most ridiculous th- uh fight we got in and that was uh he started drowning me in the kitchen with like a <laughs> pot of boiling water. My mom was like going to boil eggs, right? Yeah. But she hadn't put the eggs in yet. The water's just, just getting boiling. And I don't know. We don't know what the fight was about, right? We just remember <laughs> the fight. Like, it didn't matter. It was probably over something really fucking stupid. Whoever gets the most eggs. Yeah. He was just like, <laughs> it, it, we don't know. We didn't know how to deal with our emotions, right? So we just beat the shit out of each other. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so he starts drowning me in this pot of boiling water. And I'm like trying to fucking stop him. And we fight all the time. So he's doing a really good job of drowning me. <laughs> and, uh, and so I like, I, I got, got Oh, that's a big knife, and I just fucking swing backwards with this knife, and he fucking jumps back like that. I'm like ready to lunge at this motherfucker with a knife, and we look at each other in the eyes, we're like, "The fuck are we fighting for?" <laughs> God damn it! You know, I was like, "I'm not." I was like, "I'm about to kill my brother." <laughs> Some Cain and Abel bullshit. Yeah, he's trying to kill me. <laughs> fucking uh, yeah, we would get rough with each other, man. You know, but that's wild. We were only 18 months apart, so. That was just how we always solved all our issues. And uh, now, yeah, it made us love each other. That's a, that's a bond. That's a tight, that's a tight, yeah, my boys are 22 months, so. Yeah. It's a love-hate thing, I guess, right? Uh, it was a See love, it, it was mostly a love thing. It was, I, I think the problem is um, that we had anger issues, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe we were spoiled-ass white kids who got, <laughs> you know, who got more than we should have gotten. 
kind of thing. And so when we didn't get our way or like things were going our way, right, we didn't know how to deal with our issues properly because we just most of the time we'd get our way, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, and that that immaturity led to led to lashing out and lashing out at each other and stuff like that until. Mm. We started finally realizing that we should stop beating the well, shit fuck, out of each other. Well, fuck, you whooped his ass not too long ago. Oh, that was that was actually Eric. That was the youngest. Oh, but, it was. But he's <laughs> he was like 24. Oh, okay. At the time, he's a monster now. The guy, he's such a fucking stud. I remember your hand being in a, in a oh, cast. Oh, yeah, I broke my fucking hand. On I wanted to give him a black eye. I didn't want to fuck him up. I just wanted to give him a black eye, you know? <laughs> like, we got in a situation, and what, ha- what went through my head, um, because he, like, he attacked me at my house. I'm, like, working out, and we're like... I was like, he was he was he was being quite a shithead without getting into too many brutal details about it. Yeah, he's acting very inappropriately towards my my fucking parents, especially my mom. And she was like, "You ain't coming over here no more," you know. And then mm-hmm. he comes over to my fucking house, like trying to talk about it. And uh, and the conversation just got way out of hand mm. because Eric hasn't gotten to that point where like Chad and I try to like deal with our emotions and our anger problems, so he right, attacked right. me. And not, I mean, he's getting a lot better about it too, though, now, you know, and I love Eric to death. But uh, yeah, so he attacked me. And like the first thing that goes through my mind is, um, is when I was out, out of control a little bit, this fucking, uh, this fucking ex gangbanger in Stockton that we had uh, drumming for us at the time that I had to fucking fire <laughs> as the drummer just fucking whooped my ass because I was mouthing off, right? I was being really disrespectful about it. And, uh, and he fucking split my eye open, gave me a big black eye, and I like, you know, butterfly my eye together. And I was just like, that taught me that lesson of like respecting people. Yeah. And like, uh, and I was just like, I tried not to get myself into that situation again because I was like, I deserved that. Yeah, they call it check yourself before yeah. you wreck yourself. I fucking deserved that. <laughs> and I got that scar over my eye, and it's a reminder all the time. And I was just like, I'm going to just give this kid a black eye real quick. Mm-hmm. I don't want to fuck him up because normally I'd go for like soft spots right here and just, f- yeah, you know, you're right. anything right here is going to just dislocate mm-hmm. and fall apart and Ow. just destroy someone's face. I didn't want to do that to my little brother. And then I broke my hand all over his fucking forehead because <laughs> I was just, I was pissed. I was, I, I was pissed. By the time I flipped him on his back, I just started lighting him up. I was just like, yeah. I, I was, I, I, I just kept punching him until he said stop, and then, uh, broke the shit out of my stupid hand like an idiot. <laughs> like, don't hit people in the fucking eye. Like, that's not a place to hit someone. Just so, so hit him like in the throat. Yeah, you nuts. hit him in the soft spots. The, soft- <laughs> the spots that are softer than your hand. Not this thing. This is yeah, really hard. That's a bad one. Yeah, it's a bad thing. So he, he, he moved his head and it just like that, and I just fucking broke my metal carpal on it. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, it sucks, you know. But it's brothers, man. It's growing up. It and, is. And he's kind of at the he, he he was finally at the age where he can start a fight with us, you know. It's right. not the size difference wasn't a thing anymore. Not that it. I mean, fuck. That kid grew up really fast. He was big, uh, pretty quickly, and you know, like by the time he's like fifteen, sixteen, he's a big fucking kid. But uh, but yeah. Now after that, like the whole nightmare of family drama that was going down. You know, I was trying to kind of get him in a direction as a person. Mm-hmm. He ended up going to the military. Oh, so he's like in there right now. He's in the Air Force right now. Oh, nice. He's a really smart guy. So nice. like he went and started. He went and studied really hard and took all these fucking tests. He just nailed them like a badass. And uh, yeah, and and he just got whatever he wanted. He go to the Space Force. No, he he's a mechanic. <laughs> he's in, he fucking he like works on jets. That's sick. How cool is that? Like Very cool. Gonna, you know, like he's fucking yeah. He's up in Washington right now, working on uh, working on planes and stuff, learning how to become a fucking Air Force mechanic. That's awesome, and that's a smart move too. Because if he ever, he, I think he wants to like career. Yeah. Because he really likes it. I, he never really had that discipline in his life. After my mom dealt with me and my mm-hmm. brother Chad, right? It was like fucking ten years later. He's got this new kid, and it's just like parents were different people, and uh, I think they kind of let. They kind of just let him be a free range kid. Yeah. And the free range kid thing doesn't really work out. Um, you know, they just discipline's super important. Yeah. For a human being, we require a lot of discipline. Like we were talking about earlier in the party, you're like, Oh, you're so fucking disciplined. And it's like, Well, I wasn't, you know, but right. I was unhappy. And it makes you unhappy because you just nothing nothing satisfies structure. Your, your, yeah, yeah. It's, your life has structure now. And that structure is beautiful, man. It is. And it really, you know, wake up with the sun and go to sleep when the fucking moon comes out, you know, like that kind of shit. Like be one with the fucking planet that you're that gave birth to you. Gay uh, birth? Gay birth, exactly. <laughs> Are uh, there potty breaks? 
I mean, whatever you want, I'm gonna right? Take a You're fucking drink a beer and stuff like that. Hurry the fuck up and do that, right? So, <laughs> yeah, potty breaks, I guess. So, anyways, uh, while that fucking ginger piece of shit is uh, using my bathroom, I'll just take this time to remind you that uh, you should probably hit that subscribe button down below there and subscribe to my podcast because uh, we're trying to monetize this motherfucker i'd like to get paid for doing this and uh, if you're enjoying me putting these things out every monday uh that would definitely help me make more of these fucking things and get paid for doing this and uh you know maybe keep doing it for a long time that'd be fucking killer uh we really enjoy it that's for sure uh so yeah yeah please subscribe check it out So, on that note, it reminded me of a tale. <laughs> Tell your tale, sir. <laughs> I'll, only, I'll only let you put up your beacon if you listen to my tale. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, one of the, one of the better ta- uh, tales from back in the tour days. I was out, you know, with Davy Suicide. This has uh, got to be about circa 2013. We rotated taking drives, you know, uh, after the concert whatever and um, my, my shift always seemed to be like two to six in the morning kind of where I ended up falling nonetheless you know what you're doing you're fucking off you're drinking you eat some we ate trash all the time on the road right like fast food and all this stuff but so I just remember we're on the Ohio Ohio turnpike and I'm trying to kind of stay awake and then I literally like you know that movie semi pro where they're talking about like the jejunum <laughs> and I'm just like You're talking about Will Ferrell? <laughs> yeah, the jejunum. I was like I just feel like someone's like twisting my guts, dude. It's not normal. It's just like you know, it's like so that was like wave 1. I'm like, okay, that sucked, but like, you know, we'll go find a bathroom soon, whatever. And like wave 2 comes and it's like 10 times worse than wave one was. And I was just like, to the point that like you're clenching your butthole, like so tight to like stop any (laughs) juices flowing whatsoever. And I'm like slapping myself in the face, like just like trying to just like get through this all. And by that point I had made enough disgruntled, you know, noises that Davey wakes up. He's sitting in the front bench. Uh, It's a 15 passenger van. He's in the front bench. And, and my nickname was fart box. Right. You can only guess why. Anyways, he's like, yo, fart box. Like, what's up? And I was like, dude, this isn't like normal. I have to poo. Like something's going down. And he's like, all right, well, fuck it. Like, oh, look, the blue sign of like uh, how how soon the, you know, the next rest stop is. And so we see that coming up. It's like we're on the turnpike, right? So yeah. 20 miles. Oh no! It's one of those ones. There's not all these like That's exits and shit. That's a long time and I go, to squeeze your butt cheek. Yeah, I go, dude, that was wave two. I don't know if I'm going to make it through a wave three. Like it was bad already. <laughs> so, shit in the desert. <laughs> So uh, he's like, well, fuck it. Let's just pull over. I was like, what do I have to wipe or anything? He's like, oh, some band gave me this. This is some local band gave me their T-shirt. <laughs> like, ah! so that, and like it's Reverb Nation on the back. Like you put Reverb Nation on something as your link. Yeah. Like that's becoming deserves toilet paper. To get, yeah, it deserves to get shoved up someone's ass. <laughs> yeah. So here I go. We finally pull over. And like I'm just so excited that I'm just going to let her rip, you know. And I'm running down the hill. And you couldn't really tell that like the night before it rained because right when I hit the bottom of that hill, man, I came out of my shoes. My shoes went into this Ooh. mud and I just went bloop, bloop and just fucking kicked out of my shoes. Tumble, tumble. I now have mud all over me anyway. So it kind of looks like I'm covered in shit. You know, I got brown on me and I'm just there. I just let her rip, dude. It was like the most, you know, it's just orgasmic almost. The- just, yeah. But and then uh, we've got to find the clip. We'll have to put it out there where um Someone was filming the van's reaction, so they're like all laughing at me, and you just see me in afar, like a little goose, you know, in the field, like looking left and right, you know, and just taking a big old shit. <laughs> so, oh. and then I came back. There's a lot to kind of, you know, wipe off of me. Luckily, it wasn't poo. Come but. back covered in mud after taking a big old shit. Yep, it was a good time. It was a good time. That was a fun tour. It was a lot of madness. Um, yeah, I think the cra- the craziest one too was like back to back, right? Denver, Denver to uh, or no, Chicago to Denver, then Denver to Butte, Montana. Those were back to back dates. Not we, really. We had to like get done jamming, sell some merch, be packed by twelve, or we weren't making it. Twelve a.m. like t- oh, midnight, wow. and start driving, or you're not making load in. Jesus, that's yeah, rough. It was crazy, but anyway, so that was my my nice poo tale. Thanks for listening. <clears throat> There's nothing better than relieving that pressure in your tummy, man. Mm-hmm. 
It's like goes from the worst fucking feeling in the world to like the best fucking feeling in the world out of nowhere. You're just like, oh, thank God. Oh. <laughs> well, teaching uh, Steven how to how to poo, you know, potty train him and everything. I've always joked around and called it Mr. Hanky. Mm-hmm. So the first time he ever dropped a big old deuce in the toilet, he's like, Dad, I did a Mr. Hanky. Ah. <laughs> so I'm raising him right, bro. Yep, yeah, he loves it. That's fucking hilarious. I it's kind of nice Hankey. because, yeah, in public, too, instead of saying I have to poop, he's like, hey, Dad, I need to make a Mr. Hanky. So <laughs> it's kind of got its nice little, unless you got a South Park fans around you, but uh, even still, it's pretty awesome. If I heard that in public, I'd fucking die. I'd die laughing. I'd just start fucking busting up. And, and I, I don't let him forever. watch Rick and Morty. He knows of Mr. Hanky because I've shown him like just the howdy ho oh, and like yeah. some of the songs and stuff that aren't really like super. Yeah. And obviously, if you go deeper in the episode, it gets a little more ridiculous. But just as far as the I'm a Christmas poo song and all that stuff, yeah. he loves it. So that's funny. Rick, Rick, and then, uh, yeah, don't let him watch any Rick and Morty yet, uh, obviously, but. But he knows what it is because of always wearing it and everything. You're like, Dad, you watching Rick and Morty? Morty. Right. <laughs> He's got that. <laughs> I think there's a kid show that Justin Roiland is friends with the creator. And I was watching, like I said, I was watching those uh, Rick and Morty videos and they mm-hmm. kept mentioning like all these Easter eggs of oh, yeah. them referencing this other show that uh, Justin's friend makes. Okay. So I think, I don't know. What is that? I'm going to look it up actually. Yeah, I bet. That'd be great. I bet they'd like to watch that. I think that's uh, more appropriate for kids. I haven't seen it yet. I was gonna, mm-hmm. I was gonna look it up, but uh... well, they do uh, Peppa, Peppa the Pig, and that one um, they're saying like more kids are like, uh, you know, starting to have like talking with English accents because it's such a popular show. So it's like a bunch of English uh, animals, right? Um, and the uh, the Dougie one. So some of these popular ones. It is cool though. We're getting a lot of like cross cultural kids shows going on now. I uh, think it's good, but um, yeah, I'd be definitely curious to hear what the name of that one is. I can't find it. Oh, it's all good. We'll look it up later. <clears throat> but uh, but, but yeah, I guess great. Justin Roiland, the guy that uh, he's mm-hmm. like the animator and lead lead comedian on the show, he does all the voices. He uh, his buddy right. makes this other show, and they were talking about how they reference it constantly in Rick and Morty. And I don't even I don't even know the Let's references are like going over my head because I haven't watched this fucking other show that Justin's buddy makes. Then there's the other one that just came out on Hulu, the the Solar Opposites. I really like that show. Did you get, did you do it? All yeah, I, I watched it all already. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, the, I went the right poopa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, it was fun I just, jokes and shit. I just burned through it the other last week. So. Yeah, you can get through it pretty quick. It's mm-hmm. only one season, but yeah, it's uh no, we were talking about that actually on the last episode as well about the difference between the Solar Opposites and Rick and Morty and like Dan Harmon being the creative genius that he is right. with Rick and Morty and putting together this huge fucking fictional universe with all these easter eggs and amazing amazing setups that they do and this complicated story. It's like Dan Harmon's the fucking the man, dude. That guy's fucking smart. Right, but he's not involved in that one, right? No, exactly. That's what I mean. Oh yeah, you see yeah, the difference. Yeah, because the, you, see you see the difference in that. You can you see, see the difference, difference in the writing. You see the the writing, and then you. And the, but the the animation kind of stayed. The, the animation the is still are, Justin and yeah. the Adult Swim crew or whatever. Yeah, you know? it's, yeah. I think it's still the same crew, but um, but yeah, you can definitely tell the difference between the writing because it's like mm-hmm. mostly just jokes as opposed to like this. It felt more like Family Guy universe that yeah. they created. It felt more Family Guy ish. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but still, like, right, the uh, Co- Covo, I'm so bad with the names, the, the main... Yeah, the main... the main. He reminds alien. you of Rick. He kind of sounds like him a little bit. He's a little bit of a fucking prick, you yeah. know? And then what's funny is Terry, I was like, God, that's, that's the guy from um, the Rick and Morty episode where they go into the Rainbow Land, right? Oh. Tommy. And I and then I look I started looking it up to see who these people are actually are, and then I realized it's that really nerdy guy from Silicon Valley. Okay. Thomas, whatever. So the, it is supposed to be the Rick and Morty universe, right? Like, or is it not? I don't think it is. Okay. No, it's it's uh it's its own thing, but you hear some of the similar. Vo- it's, they're using some of the same people. Yeah. You got the girl from like Bob's Burgers that yeah. wears the bunny ears. She's the daughter. So you got you got a good like voice character cast in that show for sure. A, a lot of things. I love, um, I love the whole subplot of like the people in the wall. Yeah, that's some of the <laughs> that could fantastic. be like its whole own thing, right? I would just watch like if they just did an episode where it's just people on the wall, I would totally watch that. Which episode. was like seven, right? I, I guess it was the show. most of the episode. Yeah, right? I love it was how like the A story instead of the B story. Yeah, because the well, the main story or the the name of the episode was like uh, 
you know, Corvo gets a bear or something. And so like, if I want to rewatch it now, but like, if you start watching that wall episode again, it always shows you like in the background, uh, you see what the aliens are doing. Yeah. And, uh, and like at first, like, cause it wasn't making sense. It's just, I just, I was like stupid stuff, but like, uh, he was like putting like jars of honey on him like grenades almost like he had like honey 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 i remember that and all of a sudden they're like hitting the bear with a broom is that right? i didn't even know so that's so like going on in the background the whole time and the name of the episode is like corvo they, gets a bear. they get a bear and it has nothing to do with corvo <laughs> but like the bear. whole time the wall episode's going on and you just see those these random clips in the background of the aliens oh, fucking around wow. with this bear so you gotta already watch that like i was just like laughing about it like, oh yeah those these the, the solar opposites and the rick and morty you have to watch you have to watch so many times yeah and you still won't catch all of it you like you gotta watch it like three times and then watch a YouTube video where they cut it into fucking frame by frame for you and explain to you all what? the stuff you're missing. <laughs> Why it was funny. <laughs> yeah. And then you go, oh my God, there's like 17 jokes that went over my head in three seconds. How the fuck do they do this? Oh, and then, well, gosh, one of them, Cronen, Cronen, the Cronenberg, Cronenberg stuff. Yeah. Just that in general, like I thought it was funny and cool, but it, like it went kind of over my head a little bit. And my buddy's like, Cronenberg, like the guy who made the fly. I was like, oh, that makes so much even more sense now. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. it's just like, I just thought like, you never know if it's science You don't know if it's pop culture they're talking about. Like it just, it just gets yeah. you in all the way. John Pelosi, I showed him the show forever ago. And he's like, oh my God, thank you for showing me that. That's <laughs> it's my favorite cartoon by yeah. far. Like, yeah, it's the best cartoon ever. I hope it goes on for a very long time. Well, we know they got 70 episodes. So. They have seventy episodes. They uh, so uh, the start of season four is the beginning of the the seventy new episodes that were purchased. What? So we're gonna have Rick and Morty for a very good foreseeable future. Yeah. That is such killer news, bro. Yeah. I love that. So that's what seven more seasons, or are they ten episodes Six, a season? If or? they're doing ten episodes a season, that means yeah. we're gonna get through like a season ten, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. And have you noticed too, like how the animations changed completely? It's gotten a lot better. Yeah, because once you get fa those those fat bucks, yeah, and you know you got that guaranteed, you know, then you can get the crew together again. Because that was well, the yeah. problem. The, well, the crew can... was scattering yeah. because they were oh. had such big breaks. Yeah, so it was hard to kind of wrangle back in the. With so much writing, yeah, you know, they can't just like it's such a complex idea, and like there's so much to write mm -hmm. and to figure out, and then to go back and then double check all your shit that you wrote and make sure your timelines work. And all the stuff you're going to put in the background is accurate. And it's just like, it's got to be a very tedious uh, task to just like actually make that yeah. happen. Yeah. The way it happens so well. And just something like a poster in the background, right? Yeah. That they do. They just, all, they're always thinking of that extra, the extra nugget. Yeah. They're, they're going extra mile always. That's what I appreciate about it too. So. It's just cram full of it. You yeah. can, you can pause anything on that in Rick and Morty and just look around. And yeah. It's like everything is just, everything is something. Yep. There's not just random shit in the fucking background for no reason. And uh, I really appreciate that. That's for fucking sure. Hell yeah. It's, it's, it's hilarious, man. And then of course the intelligence of it all. Yeah. Where the fucking, uh, what they're talking about and the, the project, uh, the subject matter of every episode is just fucking way up here in the stratosphere of like uh modern science and just hypothetical science and shit like right, that. right right no it's a good time other than that as far as like i guess we're watching a lot of bullshit these days being in quarantine and i take my dad's uh notes pretty serious he's pretty good like you know if he watches it says good it's usually pretty good yeah. and uh i dove into den of thieves on netflix and that is like a new school heat, so to speak, like definitely like bank bank heist kind of like oh, really? stuff going on. You got Gerard Butler's on the cop side of things, kind of the, the, the bad boy cops, so to speak. And yeah, it was good. I like how they laid it out. It was, it was really good, actually. Good little ride. And it was a two hour, 20 minute. And it was like I was on the grip of my seat, edge of my seat the whole time. That was a movie? Yeah. Oh, okay. It was a movie. And then uh, what else did I watch? Um the Extraction is on Netflix as well. I haven't seen that That's yet. That's the, the guy that plays Thor. Yeah. And that was really good. I think we put it on, but then we stopped it. We were like, with something else we were supposed to watch. It's a lot of like bang, bang, shoot em up stuff. Yeah. Really cool like fighting and gun scenes and stuff like that. So Tight. you're into that. And then uh, my friend just uh, introduced me to the world of Upload last night on Amazon. Upload. And it was, it's a, it, it's, I think as a tech, you'll really like it. Like anyone mm. who's like really techie, it's like um, if you could upload your consciousness to the afterlife, right? So yeah. there's like this whole digital, it's the digital afterlife. 
and oh. and the more the more wealthy you are, you could afford like uh, unlimited data. And then there's like the two gigabyte people like down in the basement that like freeze when they run out of when they run out of data or they don't get like a view of the lake. It's kind of interesting. Weird. <laughs> it's super weird. And then the whole sub sub twist off of that is that yeah. he maybe was murdered instead because he was making like an app that would have computed with the digital oh, afterlife yeah. and and uh, they can communicate with each other. So like his girlfriend's still like in the real world and they can talk to each other. Yeah. And there's like sex suits or they call them hug suits, but it's like, so you can like still like make love with your lover in the afterlife. Yeah. But when they're going from like what she's doing in real life to interact with him in the virtual world and they're a and being it, it's hilarious. Cause she looks like she's just in like this, like scuba gear, like in her bathtub, <laughs> like laying there all lonely. Yeah. But then like they're laying together in the bed as it like keeps clicking back and forth. It's, it's a trip to kind of just Weird. watch it. Yeah. I have to check that out. Yeah, it's it's one of those. And then he has what's called an angel, and every time he says, "Hey, angel," she can come in. But and then that's like a that's a real world person too that's alive, and and she clicks in. That's her job. So the, like like concierge. Okay. Right, and then so like you see her and they interact. And they start having like a little love story. It gets wild, dude. I'm only like seven episodes into it, but I'm like, I guess there's two seasons, so. And there's this little like kid who was like died when he was 11, but now he would be like 18, 19. So you got this like 11 year old kid talking like he's like 18, 19. <laughs> it's really <laughs> funny, dude. And they go to the gray market, but it's like, so since they're data, they like are interacting with the dark web people that are real. Like when you watch the, when you, when you click into it, dude, you're like, yeah, this is wild. That sounds like fun. Yeah. And yeah. it's the makers of, uh, the office and parks and rec. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. And I'll probably like, it's probably a lot of good jokes then. I'd yeah. Imagine. It's not the same format though. Yeah. It's got a lot more of this weird, like adventure kind of feel to it, but you, you does have all that like dry. They don't drag of... everyone off to the corner and do personal interviews. <laughs> No, yeah, they don't do the personal interview style. <laughs> uh, that's that's what it's missing. But yeah. it, it, I think you'll feel the vibe a little bit of because like they they're always really good at building those like aw awkward scenarios, like social scenarios, right? So you get plenty of that. It's good. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. We're uh, we're like halfway through the Avengers saga, which is just an insane stack of fucking movies and TV shows you have to watch. Jesus, but um. I think the whole Marvel Universe, like, saga is nine days, but we're cutting out, like, the Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist garbage that was, like, I mean, we watched that. Like the Luke Cage on Netflix? Yeah. I watched that. Right? We watched that already, so it's, like, oh. but it has nothing to do with the Avengers. No. You know, so we're just, like, ah, do we need to spend a few days watching this entire series again to call it, like, part of the, no, we're not going to do that. What probably. do you think's the so best one? days out. What's your bet? What's your favorite movie or or mini series of people so far? Uh, definitely the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Oh yeah, those are sick. Those are the best ones. Like they're just so much fun. Like, it, has, it doesn't even need anything to do with the Marvel universe. Like those oh, are just fun say, ass movies. It's not part soundtrack. of Avengers though, right? Oh, it's totally part of Avengers. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. I'm so bad at that stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I loved Guardians of the Galaxy too. Yeah, they 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 fucking bring it all all in together. Mm -hmm. Like uh, they ended up they end up grabbing Thor. Uh, they rescue Thor from whenever uh, Th Thanos fucking destroys that whole ship mm -hmm. of uh, Asgardians that are like running away from Asgard after his sister destroyed Asgard. They're like leaving Asgard. Thanos comes in, blows the fucking ship up, okay. takes the fucking power stone they have, or the stone they have, whatever one it is, and then they, uh, and then like fucking Thor's just floating there, and they set off a fucking SOS, and then the Guardians of the Galaxy show up, and now boom, Guardians of the Galaxy are part of the Avengers. Like they're not like in the Avengers, but like it's part of the whole saga, and then everybody's fighting together. Yeah, it's. Is it it's a? Uh, are they? Uh, there's two movies of Guardians of the Galaxy. There's yeah. a third now. They're the, well, technically the end game, like okay. um, right Avengers, uh, Infinity War and Avengers Endgame, would be if you want to consider them part of the Guardians of the Galaxy universe as well, because they're they're in those movies for sure, big time. Okay. Um, like yeah, Chris Pratt and, uh, and well, I guess I gotta Tony watch Stark or like I gotta watch those ones. Buttonheads. You yeah. never saw the last ones? Nah. With the Infinity Dude, they're amazing. But yeah, I gotta watch it. Yeah, you dude, start it all over. You're there's got nothing else to do. Fuck it. Yeah, but um, like, I'm appreciating it a lot more because I never watched Agents of Shield. I never watched Agent Carter. Right. Um, and so, 
like Jarvis is a character in Agent Carter because it's Tony Stark's dad. Okay. Uh, and Tony Stark's dad has a butler named Jarvis, and Jarvis just fucking he's awesome. He's just, he's yeah, a yeah, useful yeah. guy. Uh, and like it's kind of cool to actually experience that person in the saga alongside like Tony's dad, and then Tony has this digital version of Jarvis that's always helping him out. You know, it's like he's just fucking. He went through an entire century taking care of the Starks. Even though he's yeah yeah he's like now he's in a computer or whatever, but uh, like upload yeah. Like upload. <laughs> so, but it's really cool. Like I just watched uh, Winter Soldier was the last one we watched. And I didn't watch Winter Soldier because like I didn't like the first Captain America very much. I he's my least favorite. Yeah, I like him more now that I've done the whole saga. Gotcha. I, I appreciate Captain America more, and he's a fucking badass in Winter Soldier. Like okay. like I didn't watch it at all because the first Captain America was kind of boring. He's and such a like, he was such a whiny. Yeah right. He was such a whiny in the first movie or two. Yeah. In like, this, in the, I wasn't into him. So, if he's cool now. In he, Winter Soldier, he's really cool. All right, I got to check that out. Like, right away, it's like action sequence, and he goes and just beats the shit out of everybody on this boat that's being held hostage or whatever. But, like... Awesome. Um, fucking... No, nah, it's it's a totally different vibe, right? It's like, he's just like, oh, I guess I'll go fucking help Nick Fury out again since he's hassling me. And then he shows up and just, how fast can I whoop these dudes' ass so I can get back to my fucking life you know what i mean like yeah. he, he doesn't have time for this shit but he's got to i'm constantly cleaning up nick fury's mess that's his attitude about it and then uh yeah and then it just fucking all hell breaks out right like the whole that that movie's really good i want to give away too much of the movie since you haven't seen it but like i was really surprised and kind of like oh you dumb fucker i can't believe you didn't watch this movie which has all this important crucial story information and there's so much shit happens in that movie mm -hmm. that I hadn't seen, and then I just moved on to the next, to Civil War or whatever, which I was like, what the fuck is happening here? This is gay. And then, uh, or lame, sorry, whatever you want to say. I'm, I, I like I, gay. I, I grew up in the 90s. It's not, I, yeah. It's gay. I know, right? They're not supposed to say it that way. But, uh, I don't know. So gay. Shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking, uh, so yeah, it's, uh, what's it called? Um, yeah, so like Civil War was like, only okay but now i think i'll appreciate it a little bit more because i watched all the shield episodes and then i watched the winter soldier mm -hmm. and it's like oh now i have all this backstory now it makes more sense okay because there was so much shit i was missing to catch up to it all yeah like i remember iron man was cool Iron's i liked great. iron man a lot and then i think i only watched the first avengers yeah so i couldn't even tell you like the last movie i saw in the movie theater i think was like uh independence day resurgence Oh, that was terrible. And I fell asleep in it and and was, like yeah. You know, uh I wake up and I was just like did the humans live? And my girl's like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Cool." Like, I don't Shocker. know. Shocker. I've been yeah, I've I've been really burned out on a lot of the Hollywood and going to the movies and trying to even keep track of all that. And like it, there's the summer blockbusters, woohoo. But it's just like, yeah, it's been so much like recycled garbage for so oh, long. Is. Um that even I feel like the whole Marvel Universe time had its kind of like lull, but it sounds like it's getting better again. Or at least there's definitely yeah. like the pick and choose out of those, right? Well, so they kind of they kind of tied it all up in a bow for yeah. us, right? Yeah. And like uh, at the end of Endgame, it kind of leaves everything at a great point, like for the, like all those characters that they've been developing for a decade, mm -hmm. and they, if it, it really it, has been a decade, huh? Yeah, or longer. Shit. Yeah, it's it's so much. It's it so is. many movies and so many TV shows. It's like it. It's not just a TV show you have to watch, right? It's like right. multiple it's TV shows that have season after season of fucking this show, and uh, uh, like I think Shield is like six fucking seasons, and, and they all tie into each other. They all tie in. So like as you're watching the movies, right? Sounds exhausting. Like you, like we pulled up a list <laughs> online because like fucking thank God for nerds, right? I love I. I love being a nerd, and I love that nerds do OCD shit, like create lists of the exact chronological order yeah, yeah. of how to watch everything. Right. So it's like you watch Captain America take on the Nazis in the 40s, yeah. and then uh, you know he gets frozen, and then it goes right to like Miss Marvel, mm -hmm. even though that movie came out way fucking later. It's like in the chronological timeline, Miss Marvel happened right here, and then the whole Agents of Carter two seasons happened right after Miss Marvel, and then you jump back into like I think the Hulk movie or something like that, or like fucking jumps forward so someone's laid it iron, out for iron you. man someone's it might be it iron man you. is the one that comes back first but uh yeah and then it goes into shield back out of shield into a thor movie and then back into shield and it's like it says watch the first seven ep seven episodes of shield then watch the thor movie the second thor movie like the the dark thor movie 
uh, and then come back to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And then episode eight starts with Coulson fucking sweeping up a bunch of shit that Thor destroyed. And he's like, always oh, cleaning up after gods and stuff like that. And like, they just make the comment. It's like, like noob it, noob. It literally, yeah. <laughs> it literally flows in the middle of the fucking show through a movie back into the show. Weird. Through a movie back into the show. And so was this planned or did Definitely. It, really? They had to have this all planned out way in advance to accomplish it the way they did. I mean, it's a masterpiece. When you when you take a big fucking giant step back and mm-hmm. look at the fucking 25 movies and six TV shows that they put out to accomplish this, it's just like, fuck, man. They really... And they mapped it out. Like, it, right. it, everything ties together and everything has the same characters and costumes and everything's like fucking... It's like... It's very beautifully done, especially when you go and you watch what DC fucking shat out, Mm -hmm. and it's just like, uh, was anybody in the same fucking room for more than three days, or did you guys just fucking wing-ding this thing and go, oh, well, comic book movies sell? No, they don't. Marvel movies sell, because they have a fucking strategy that works. That's true. And those fucking DC ones are trash. Well, other than was was it the was Joker considered a DC or is that well, a Joker's standalone? DC? Yeah, he, that is a DC you know, character, of yeah. course. That was well. I mean, but what, the that, Joker was great. It broke all kinds of yeah uh, records for R-rated movie yeah. and the subject matter. Do you saw it, right? Yeah, right. But how many Jokers have there been in the last ten years? How many Iron Mans have there been in the last ten years? Quite a few. Yeah, you know, it's always been. It's always been Robert Downey Jr. Oh, I see what you're saying. The actor itself. The actor yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah. But they've had, they did three Batmans with one Joker, and then they did another thing with Suicide Squad, and they made this other Joker, and right, then they made right. this other fucking Joker, and it's like, okay, well, let's just do another fucking Batman. We'll have a fourth Joker. How about that, well, guys? Isn't there let's new- just, you know, we'll get fucking instead of having Ben Affleck, because he dropped out, right? We're getting another fucking guy to play, the fucking vampire guy or whatever is going to play Batman now. Yes. He'll do yeah. one fucking Batman movie with a different fucking Joker, and then, oh, well, he's going to fucking quit, and now we're going to get a different yeah, fucking Batman. It's saying. just like, get some fucking consistency, man. I'm not giving you my money. Yeah. No, I hear you. Yeah. But, that, that I mean, Joaquin Phoenix definitely killed it. He killed it. Oh, yeah. the Joker movie's a different thing. That's a standalone That's, entity. Yeah. Well, and I love it. leads actually leads up to him escaping Arkham. Yeah, at the end, and that right. actually leads well into Batman Begins. It, if you watch it in that order, yeah, it okay. actually like Batman Begins, right? Maybe I'm fuck, maybe I'm fucking up, but I feel like, well, there's there's the video games too, so I'm, maybe I'm blending something. But yeah, well, that's the thing you is definitely they didn't have a consistent storyline. That is the story of Joe. Oh, I'm sorry, that not Batman Begins. The first Batman with uh, uh, Michael uh, Keaton. So he's actually escapes from. Uh, the Arkham okay. and he gets like a gang of people remember how he's kind of almost looked like a celebrity at the end they pull him out of the car and he's got all these followers already yeah. so then he's in Arkham he escapes from the the loony bin and then he starts his whole gang and then like Batman number one with Jack Nicholson Joker and Michael Keaton Michael Keaton ah. it's kind of picks up that's where that picks up because he's got Christian all these Bale. cronies he launches them on the city and he's kind of like a crazy I, I liked it. Yeah. You know, I really did. I See, I liked nice. those Batmans mm-hmm. where they were super not serial. They was just like, it's kind of. Well, they were darker than you think. A little dark. Th- they were yeah. darker than you think. Have you rewatched them recently? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, yeah. they're pretty dark, especially Returns, right? The, the yeah. Danny, with Danny DeVito. And yeah. It's, he's it's, super creepy. It's like uh, jokingly dark. Yeah. It's because he's just like, he just wipes people. I forgot how like murderous he was. A Batman? Yeah, the first one. How yeah. Jack Nicholas is oh, Nicholson is just like Jack Nicholson. Yeah, sorry. Jack Nicholson is just like walks in the door, bang. Yeah. Like doesn't even think twice about it. Like, oh yeah. That was, like when you think about when that came out, like it's pretty gnarly. Oh, that was a great movie. I don't know how many times I watched that as a kid. The the murder the, the, the Joker murder scene in the apartment when he when he kills the guy that like betrayed him. Uh, and the midget come over. The midget. Oh, you're saying yeah. The new, the, the, the new, new one. The new Joker. Yes. By far um, one of the most gruesome murders I've ever seen on a R-rated movie ever. Like, yeah. Individual kill. Like it was just so. You thought he's gonna bang his head against the wall like two or three times and be done, but like, it just keeps going and going and going, and then, yeah, you're just kind of like it makes you uncomfortable. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was just like, oh wow, this was. And the fucking one little those, guy on the ground. One just, of those brutal murders yeah. I've ever seen. Dude, he's just like, you were always nice to me. You can get the fuck out of here. Yeah. I love that. And like, yeah. he's just like, fuck this guy. He's like, I might be on a rampage, yeah. but I remember. 
I remember who fucking had my back whenever still, I was fucking down. Still some kind of moral code there, right? I love that about him. Yep. I always, I that fucking Joker movie was great. Like by the time he's starts killing people, you're just like it's about fucking time. <laughs> you know, like fuck those people. I'm so you're so on his side. Right, right. You know, oh, yeah, like you you that didn't feel like he was the bad guy for right. a very long time in that movie, right? He was just, he really felt like he was the victim. And, uh, yeah, I think i think most people's perspective, that's how they feel as mm-hmm. well. Even people that are bad people, you right. know? They're like, no, the, well, the world was against me and I was doing what I had to do to fucking take it back. And it's like, well, you're fucking crazy as shit. But, uh... <laughs> well, it only takes one moment to make you the bad guy. Now you can live your life for 40 years, 50 years of being the a stand-up citizen and it only takes like some uh falling down situation joker situation and yeah you snap and i thought that they did a really good job of going into kind of the mental side of it all too yeah for uh all the society in the world's you know forgotten children so to speak oh yeah so. especially dealing with like um his social worker not remembering anything he says to him she yep. doesn't give a fuck about that guy you know like mm-hmm. he's just another person she's one of 20 people she has to see today right for fucking 15 minutes you know she's just like repeating what she has written on a sheet for him basically and then put that sheet down next person comes in she's just going to repeat mm-hmm. what she she's just not taking care of these people at all you yep. know it's just a system that's un- underfunded and d- what are they supposed to do what are they I supposed know, to do man. you know uh, yeah yeah and that's what happens when fucking corporate greed just takes over everything you know, everybody wants to just funnel all the money into one person's pocket. We don't even have any looty bins anymore, right? Like, yeah, they close them all down. They close most of them. I mean, there's still a couple, but they close most of them down. Yeah, yeah. That's why you have sixty thousand homeless people in California. You know, those people can't take care of themselves, mm-hmm. and it's not uh, it's not their fucking fault. Yeah, you know, they they can't. They are not mentally equipped to fucking handle life. They need someone there. It's getting gnarly in Cali, though. Like, Skid Row is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. And uh, they've got to go in with cleaning crews with well, police and stuff like that because otherwise they'll come out and attack them. Are they finally, are they finally going out there with cleaning crews? Because, like, Texas, right? Uh, what I loved about fucking Texas whenever all this started, like, well, not when it all started, but, I mean, there's always been homeless people, but uh, when it started getting bad, when the camp started getting big, Texas was just like, uh, okay, and they show up and they let people know and they leave flyers on the ground and they say uh we'll be here on wednesday and we're fucking coming with fire trucks and we're spraying all your fucking shit off of our sidewalk yeah whether you're here or not you better move your fucking tent because the hoses are coming dang and and they just show up and start spraying and fuck you you know we told you yeah move out of the way come back on thursday we're cleaning it for you Mm -hmm. we're not going to let you just turn our streets into this disease ridden fucking cesspool yeah you can't and uh and it breaks it up for a second you know so that the camp doesn't keep getting bigger it's like you break it up they got to go somewhere else and they'll come back to that spot and then you know we'll fucking come back with hoses we'll spray their shit off the fucking ground do what we got to do honestly we need to start giving these people a real place to go you know like not just tell them to fuck off that's not a solution, mm-hmm. right? Like, I mean, goddamn. You or like gotta, here, right? They're trying to, trying to say they're going to f- uh, fine homeless people <laughs> for yeah. being homeless. Like, okay. Yeah. Uh, let me let me get right over, all over that, paying I, that ticket, sir. I know, right? And it's not a ticket that anyone expects you to pay. What it is is, um, and I know a lot of people were up in arms about that absurd law that they passed, mm-hmm. but it just gives the fucking cops a Uh, the ability to enforce a law right Mm -hmm. like they need to have something on paper that says i'm enforcing this Mm -hmm. right here and this says i have to move you right right and i have the right to move you and without you know that's why california goes you can't do that and and then all of a sudden now everybody's gonna be homeless in california and 60,000 plus people are fucking living on the streets and shooting heroin they're handing out heroin needles and letting people shit all over the fucking streets and it's just like this is not a solution man there's land you can give these people. You can designate space somewhere. You know, mm-hmm. there's, I mean, uh, we have money to build shelters and feed these fucking people. Well, apparently we have $5.5 trillion. <laughs> like, we have so I don't know where money. all that money just went, yeah. but it definitely didn't go to all these kinds of th- the real problems. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, 
and it's not going to get any better. This problem isn't going away. All the yep. fucking jobs that are lower end, like labor jobs, where someone who has a fucking IQ of 100 or it, you know isn't that great at doing all these fucking advanced skill sets, mm-hmm. where they're just like, yeah, I can, I can work in a factory, I can handle this. I, it's, it's eight hours a day plus a lunch, and I can fucking do my one spot on the line, and I can make enough money to survive. Yeah, and that job's going to go away. Oh yeah, and then he's just gonna be like that. That person and all those people that also are working on that line are just gonna be like, "Well, I have, I'm willing to work, right? Uh, but like, where can I work? Because right. robots are doing everything, and then right. the problem's gonna be way out of fucking control." Well, and we're looking at what just happened too. The so many businesses, just a couple of retails that uh, come to mind right now, like Pier One's done. Neiman Marcus is done. All of this has been kind of the breaking, yeah. the breaking point for a lot of these companies. So we're not talking about like just because we say okay, green light go, everyone can go back to work now. Yeah, there's gonna be many people who are gonna have long term unemployment or, or just jobless, right? Yeah. So many, so many uh, removed, removed jobs that we're not gonna see anybody make the rebound back. No, it's, it's gonna be crazy. Maybe ever. Maybe ever. Yeah. Maybe yeah. ever. Like. Someone who's in their mid fifties or something like that that mm-hmm. was counting on the next ten years to just riding out the skill that they've developed and now it's not even an option. Right. What are they supposed to fucking do? They're fifty five. Where are they going to get a fucking job? And- well, I'll come in. My mom. She had to recreate herself. Um, yeah. Uh, the last crash, oh nine area. She went back to school and became a nurse. Yeah. And that's but the, even that's when that's supposed to be lot. like that was supposed to be like recession proof. And there's actually a lot of nurses getting laid off right now. Yeah. Well, our industry is supposed to be fucking the one industry that doesn't get taken down by these kind of economic collapses, you know? But mm-hmm. it's because it's the virus situation that right. is causing it. Right. If it wasn't a virus, we'd still be putting on shows. Hell yeah, we would. Um, but, uh, and it's it's always been the case. Like, anytime there's uh, any kind of dive in the economy or any kind of, like, shit, shikateri, it's like, no, people still want it. People are still going to come out Friday night and drink away their problems and watch the live band. Mm-hmm. People still have to have tax write-offs and have these big corporate events um sports sports yeah. like like the us in the live entertainment uh field we were just i've i was so secure in my position i was just like i'll never not have work right that's right. an absurd concept that there won't be concerts that there won't be corporate events there won't be sporting events what the fuck kind of world would that like what that just never in my wildest fucking dreams yeah was a possibility to me well, I think we all dealt with that, right? Like, I think right when it first happened, I was at Disneyland Resort uh, doing a show, loaded in for two days, and then they came and pulled the plug because the governor said nothing, nothing over 250 people. And I, th- I, I think it was legitimately like the same feelings of like having a, a very important person in your life die. Like you're in yeah. shock. Then you were, I was like kind of depressed, you know, then I was like... All, all those seven stages of grieving, they say, almost just like it blew me away. Oh, yeah. To watch it. And then hearing stories like yours and just the many colleagues that we have and friends that are in this that have reinvested in their businesses or, you know, took in the leap to like go to the next level and then just literally watch it. Domino's oh, yeah. just doom, 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 doom. Every show go down. So, yeah. I had made the biggest investment I had ever made in my life, mm-hmm. like right at the end of February. Perfect time. Perfect we're all, time. We're all high fiving. Yeah, I was just like killing uh, it. Yeah, we just made a bunch of money, and like it was start. It's like okay, summer's gonna hit soon, and we know that summer slows down the corporate thing. So I just bought a big PA and, and a bunch of lights to like do the concert stuff again. And I mm-hmm. partnered up with a guy, and then yeah, it all just took a shit. And it was like this huge investment that I had made, where I was like, oh, I'm gonna make a bunch of money. It just turned into well, you're fucked. Yeah. Have fun with these speakers you can't do anything with. It was literally like paid for by what you had booked already, essentially. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So it it justified the meet. It did. I had, we were doing a couple shows. We was like, it was all, it was all scheduled out to be like, we're doing a couple shows a month and it was like, we're going to make so much money. And I was like, yeah, sweet. So like in six months, this will be paid for. Yep. And then I'll make money and I'll make profit off of it after that. And then I have my own thing where it's like, oh, well, if the corporate thing's not working, this is working, if this isn't working, corporate thing's working, it's just like money. Yep. Money, 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 money. And it's all gone. All at once. I'm literally sitting there with like one of my main clients too. So uh, I'm like, oh man, I had just this such and such get canceled. And then we were like literally on our laptops working pre-production stuff. And then he goes, this just canceled. And then I'm like, this just canceled. For two hours, we were just literally like, Every March show, every April show, you know, 
seeing things get rescheduled, and that was just that day in early March, you know, March 12th. I and remember. then as it's further gone on and I've gotten calls, October's done, September's done, you know. Just Have like, you gotten calls all the way out to October and September? Or de- yeah. That's disappointing to hear. Yeah. That is disappointing to hear. Some of the big ones. Yeah. That's why I started this thing, though, man. Like, I was just like, fuck it. If I'm going to be stuck at home, mm-hmm. we're going to start shooting videos and start putting a YouTube thing out. I've been wanting to do this for a while. So I was like, it was a perfect opportunity. Forces the hand. Yeah. I was never going to do it whenever I was working 30, 30 days a week. Yeah. Or 30 days a month or 30 days in a row is what I'm trying to say. Wouldn't have time. Yeah. Where just, sleep. Yeah. Yeah. It was just like, yeah, I worked 16 hour days over and over and over and over and over. And I was, I was cool with that because mm-hmm. it was good money. But you never have time for any of this stuff. Right. Any I'm actually looking shit. at, uh, I'm starting to work with a female artist uh, to produce her. She's kind of like a rapper, singer chick. And uh, get back into my own tune stuff and setting nice. up my studio in, in L.A. Uh, it's already set up to kind of be a writing studio, but I wanted to get set up to, to do recording again. And then, yeah, like spend a little money to these command stations. We're going to need – so you're set up pretty well here. Um, we're starting to see more like remote work coming in. There's yeah. tons of platforms. We need admins. We need guys that know how to do video and, and, and just like – it's like herding cats, right? It's a lot of files that we're going to get from the clients that need to be converted, that they're going to send us the wrong file type, right? Yeah. It's a lot of that stuff. It's tedious, and it's a lot of, like, you know, our, instead of working in a warehouse, QCing gear now, we're QCing people's content that they're turning into us. Okay. You know, that's kind of what it's turning into right now until we can see it. it, it because there's actual government restrictions, too. Okay. So as we see, you know, 10 people can be in a room, Cool. So I can have an audio guy here, a video guy, a this, that, a camera guy, this, right? So we're going to start seeing all these studios popping up yeah. and it's going to be a big collaboration. I mean, I don't think any one company is going to kill it. Um, the, everyone's going to have to lean on each other, you know, coming, coming through this all. So Yeah. I sh- I've, I've actually been considering doing something similar as well and getting set up to do other people's live broadcasts. Mm-hmm. I kind of want to just stick to doing my own thing. Like I've always done everybody else's stuff for them and never taken the time to invest in myself where right. I can just like try to ride my own media projects and see if they can actually come up with money. Right. Come right. Up with marketing uh, dollars and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I'm interested to really see what happens with this thing and hopefully it does work out. But, um, and yeah, if not, you have fun an option. I'm still going to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to stop doing this. No, like, it's great. I really I'm, enjoy doing it. I'm glad. And thanks again for having me. I don't know if I even said that, but this is oh. uh, it's a good way to hang out, see some old friends, have good convos. Yeah. Share what's going on in the world. So like I really enjoy doing the like at length conversations with people. Mm-hmm. It's one of those things that um, we didn't know was missing from our lives. Yeah. Uh, once I started doing this with my friends, I f- like. I don't know, people, like the connection between me and them, like having a two, three hour conversation with somebody, that's a fucking, that's a deep thing that ha- just, just happened, right? And it's not like a like on your fucking Facebook thing or I posted mm-hmm. a comment and you fucking LOL'd back. It's like, that's not real communication. What we're doing now is into communicating the into the ginger. Yeah. Exactly. Um, <laughs> and um, I think it's something that's really lacking in our modern existence is just like, mm-hmm. um, just shutting all this bullshit down and like just talking man just... wasn't rogan like the og though yeah rogan's been doing it for a while now i feel like he's like the one that i knew about before anyone really even did it more. yeah 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 rogan's um i mean he's not the uh first guy to do a podcast by any means but uh probably but the first one to get more famous so to speak he's definitely the most famous podcaster mm-hmm. and he's definitely a uh, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure he's the highest paid podcaster out there, I mean, especially that, with the Spotify deal. He's got he just that got. 100 mil, dude. Yeah, so he's the he's the highest paid spot podcaster by far. That's a that's a hell of a career though. Going back to like Fear Factor, and then like he was a comedian. Is com- by the way, if you've never watched his actual stand up comedy, oh, I have. you have to. I had tickets in July, mm-hmm. but I'm pretty sure we're not going. But it says they're still on sale. Mm-hmm. But he talks about on his show that he doesn't have any dates until September. So I don't know if I had so, just I just probably haven't gotten the email. But what yet. was he first like from stand up comedy to the Fear Factor guy, and then he's like the UFC guy. Yeah, and he knows what he's talking about. So well, like, he was in Taekwondo his whole life. Take your dough. Yeah. So yeah. he so growing up he did Taekwondo forever, and he competed in Taekwondo, and gotcha. he was really good at it. And um, 
So he had the fight knowledge. Yeah, he had the fight knowledge, and he was doing, like, the acting thing, right? Because he did news radio with Phil Hartman and all that. And then um, uh, then, then Fear Factor, and um, and the UFC hit him up about it. And I don't think he was even, like, if you – I watched a thing about him talking about uh, the beginnings of it, and he wasn't really making much money. Right. Um, And his friends were like, why are you associating with this – fucking cage fighting thing this is going to ruin your career like way early right? yeah he like, was like the, I mean, he was there for like from the beginning. the beginning yeah and then he he left for a second and then he came back mm-hmm. and um and when he came back i guess it was like it was really starting to pick up and he was mm-hmm. like oh shit you guys have been doing something with this huh and uh and now it's like one of the biggest goddamn things on the planet it is the and, second largest uh merch sales after soccer Wow, worldwide it's is it a, really? It's a worldwide sport like soccer because yeah. it's like not everybody in the whole world watches NBA or NFL. Quite no. honestly, everybody across the whole world is watching soccer and they're watching UFC. Yeah, so it is an international, huge international brand now. That's why Reebok getting the deal with them and all that was pretty big for them. Kind of hurt the fighters though because the Reebok deals really fucked a lot of the fighters because that's they'd get a lot of sponsorships because they could wear their clothes after this, that, and the other. So UFC profited from the from the Reebok deal, but it kind of sucked for a lot of the individual fighters because they don't get to rep their own brands. They don't. They because yeah, I mean they have to walk in with Reebok on during the interview. They have to have the Reebok on. So there's very limited times when they can be a spokesperson for yeah the products that sponsor them or they don't get to take dana white's fucking camera time and turn it into their own sponsorship dollars right that's dana white sponsorship dollars right so i mean and i've sat in the fly on the wall so some of their like the ufc trainings uh for like the rookies and stuff because i was there doing the 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 interpretation stuff so i had all my setups there everyone thought i was a fighter which i thought was really funny and i used to yeah i used to back in the day i actually did a little mma before I broke my hand, you know, broke my pinky enough times, I'm like, do I want to play music? Do I want to fight? I was yeah. pretty gnarly fighter back in the day. Yeah. But th- yeah, everyone's asking me where I trained. I was like, oh I, yeah, let's. Well, I did Ishinru. Um, I did um, Okinawa Kempo, a little judo, and uh, yeah, it was fun back in the day. I was pretty gnarly up until about my 20s when I busted my knee the first time. It wasn't just fucking around with my friends, like, yeah. all, doing all this crazy shit, and then. The day, like, just if, like, me, you, and Chad start wrestling around, fucking around, and being drunk, and just pop my knee, and it was That's done. That's how it goes. Yep. So. My buddy, uh, my buddy did that, too. He was pretty athletic, too, but he fucking fell drunk as fuck. He just pissed drunk, and his knees, his knees, like, curved themselves, like, click right on, oh. like, a, a concrete, and he just ripped his kneecaps up, and fucking, did, he, he can walk, but... He ain't running no more, you know what I mean? Damn. You better be taking it easy kind of thing. Yeah, they're not fighting. Still golfing. Just fucking around. I love golfing. Do you? Yeah. Ray want, Ray likes uh, golf. He wants to start golfing. Uh, I need, need to, to find out. a set of used, like, left-handed clubs or something. Oh, is he a lefty? I, I'm, uh, I'm this weird half-ambidextrous freak who I can do both ways, but one way always feels more natural than the other. And so when you depends. masturbate, is it like cracking the pepper or? No, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'll just. You know, <laughs> one gets a little tired. That whole fucking thing. You know, whichever I can, whatever I can grab as fast that as I can grab t- it. <laughs> uh, no, like I throw right-handed, but like I bat left-handed. Yeah, and I can bat right-handed, and I can throw left-handed. So have you even held a club to see what you would feel? Yeah, no, I can do it. I can do both ways. So like when I play tennis or mm-hmm. badminton or something like that, you um, just have sorry, two, tennis like like racquetball. You have two forehands. I have two. I have two hands, and yeah. I'll and I float the racket yeah. in between my hands as I'm waiting for the ball to come. Yeah, and it's always kind of just like in both hands, and That's so if cool. it goes this way or that way, I fucking I do this or I do that. So you don't it really gives me this huge reach. So you don't really do it. You don't really have a backhand. I Just can a, backhand, but I don't need to. Yeah. But um. But yeah, I, I can. I I have a little bit of a backhand, but I I I, I can just switch it. I can swap back and forth uh, back like this. When I, with tennis, it feels good both ways, and like bowling too. Like, I'll bowl one frame right hand, one frame left hand. That's just wild. for fun. Yeah. So it's so. But when I golf, right, like golfing right hand feels fucking weird. Like so it just, you're. Yeah, you'd rather go left. It feels really natural left-handed. Okay, like yeah. I, my my everything twists right and yeah. it just flows. Mm-hmm. And when I do it right-handed, it's kind of like I'm I'm trying to golf as gotcha. opposed to just like naturally golfing. Yeah, sounds like that's the way to go then. Yeah, it was always fun. Like uh, when I was playing baseball as a kid, they'd switch at me. Like so, they would go out and be like, "All right, so go out and bat right-handed, and then go actually bat left-handed on the second pitch." Yeah, fuck with the guy, you know. And it's just like. 
I didn't, you know, I was never much into sports, but when you're a kid, you play baseball and it was fun. It was, mm-hmm. it was efficient enough. So I get a couple hits. Hell yeah. You know, I was never really that great. I was always the nerdy skinny kid. I didn't start working out properly until I was older when I quit drinking, you know. I'm looking forward to uh, Steve and get, you know, the boys getting into sports. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Going to the, going to the games and he's already doing soccer, ripping it. You know, he loves his soccer. He loves hockey. You know, hockey's one of those expensive ones, though. You got to buy the pads all the time. So, but I think uh, he, in the backyard, he's ripping it up. He's got very um, natural, like, cutoff movements. Like, when the ball or the puck's rolling, he knows how to, like, run ahead to cut it off, stop it, gain control, gets back into it. It's really cool to see, like, how the natural ability is already there. That's awesome. Whereas Theo just looks like his head weighs too much for his body, and he's just, like, constantly falling everywhere. Yeah. But he'll grow into it soon. Yeah. But that dude's just, we always joke around because uh, Theo's head's always got like bruises on it because this kid just like, <laughs> dude, he runs into walls. He falls. Like, uh, he'll just be standing there and then just fall over. <laughs> you know, like poor Theo for every every ounce of, uh, you know, athleticism that Steven has, like Theo got the opposite. Nice. So. I feel like that's what happened with my brothers, man. I'm the skinny little one. And those two guys are fucking huge dudes. Mm-hmm. I don't know what happened with me. I'm just not. I look just like my dad looked when he was a kid. I think they got my mom's jeans. My everyone in my mom's family is a little bit bigger. Right? Well, I met, I met Howie Long Jr. So you know Howie Long, right, yeah. from the Raiders, and then his the son. I think it's there's a Kyle and a Chris Long who both play in the NFL too. They're both linemen. They're giant. And then you got Howie Long Jr. is the last son. He was the guy like that was uh, the, the 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 ticket. The guys does does recruitment and the premium ticket sales and like that's the guy that was my contact. You would not think that he was in that family i mean he's like all of five foot nine ten and oh really <laughs> a buck a buck fifty sixty i mean like the re- his dad his brothers ginormous linemen defensive linemen for the nfl and he just looked the office part yeah <laughs> that's me man yeah. my brothers are like my fucking chad i think is like 220 right now or something wow. like that just you know just like a the- good looking 220 oh yeah he's a fucking stud he's always he's, he's in the fucking garage lifting weights yeah. for three hours a day I'm, every day i'm the fattest ever but i'm like 203 right now look at I this am? pooch i got the pooch going thing. yeah it's time to get get some I, I think if i uh actually you know get get motivated again my body changes pretty quick i should be walking around about a buck 85 yeah pretty comfortably yeah i've never made it that high i i've never gotten to 170 even jeez yeah i got uh, the most i ever made where i cut out all my cardio and i like just lifted heavy every day Mm -hmm. and ate like six times a day and i was just like i was just trying as hard as i could to put on meat yeah and i was just like I, i i got to like a buck 65 and like, and brick walled hella hard, and I was just like, yeah, my body just doesn't get like that. Yeah, I just don't. I'm don't a, force it. Yeah. yeah, I'm ectomorphic, you know. And it's how it works with yep. your body types. Some yep. people are mesomorphic, and they can, they could put a lot of muscle on real easily. And I mean, sure, if I, I mean, anybody can eat ten thousand calories a day and lift heavy for you know like a year straight, you're gonna get big. Right. You know, you're gonna get big, but um. I wasn't eating no fucking 10,000 calories. And Sounds exhausting in itself. It is. Like, I was eating, like, six, 7,000 calories a day, you know, maybe more. But it was, like, I was, it was hard because I was trying to eat healthy food. Like, I wasn't trying to fuck my cholesterol all up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, like, a lot of these guys that lift heavy that are, like, you know, massive bodybuilders, I mean, they fucking eat whatever they want, you know? They're just mm-hmm. putting pieces of cake in with fucking Pop-Tarts and milk and just fucking pour milk on it, and that's a shake to them. You know, and like, let's put six fucking protein scoops in that bitch and yeah, that'll be that my look breakfast like, they look like uh wash it for for like somebody put in the washer machine like the yeah. laundry scoops of yeah protein dude Yo, i yeah. tried to do that to do a bulk up thing i was like it was too gross i was dude. like drinking that much protein in a day and like ugh. it's too much yeah it's 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 the workout's not the hard part no it's eating like that yeah being able to put that much food in your stomach and it, you never are hungry once you start that process right you're always just fucking going oh i'm so full and they're like well figure it out because you got to eat another 1500 calories in 30 minutes and it's just like oh my god what nah, it's already like been <laughs> it's already time to eat again that's how i that's how i felt for i don't know i did, I did it for like four months 
Frankly, I'd be more scared of fighting a guy your style than uh, a big buff guy. Like the yeah. skinny noodles, flexible noodle strong guys are mm-hmm. always way way harder to fight than the than the buff yoked out dudes. The trick to fighting a guy my size, my mm-hmm. biggest weakness is is overall strength. If I'm if if you let me stay on my toes, I'm gonna fuck you up, mm-hmm. right? I got reach, and I'm quick, right? And I do have a lot of muscle going on, right? But um. Like Ray, you know, like one of my fucking, he, he knows. Right. He's just going to take a couple shots. He's going to just take them, and he's going to bear hug me. And then he's just going to die <laughs> right on the ground on top of me <laughs> and start laughing his ass off of my fucking face. What are you going to do now, you skinny fucker? Mm. Bam! <laughs> you, just, you just need a little judo. You, you yeah. learn how to get out of those situations. Well, I've been training in jiu-jitsu, um, although, uh, yeah, not uh, this year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, was, I did, uh, I did a, a couple months last year. Yep. And then I broke my ribs or bruised my ribs or whatever. Yeah. And then I continued to train with with bruised ribs and then I really fucked my ribs up. And uh cuz I was having fun and I didn't want what was it was it was October, right? And I was like I was trying to get 10 uh workouts in for sober October with with Joe Rogan and I I, I almost got him, but I didn't I bruised my ribs so I had to stop. Yeah. I had yeah. to stop. I couldn't I couldn't sleep. I was like, Oh my fucking ribs are just fucked and I went I went like something happened and I was like, Ah, oh, this isn't that great but like let's go roll anyways, stop being a pussy, you know, you'll stretch, it'll feel better. You've had, you know you, <laughs> being a pussy. Yeah, you know, like I didn't think it was a big deal. And then we were rolling and I had a guy land right on my ribs, of course, right? Like yeah. it's just full body weight, slam me to the ground and came down on top of my ribs and I was just like like I'm out, that's it. I can't fucking roll the rest of the day, and then uh, and then I just, I haven't been back. I was like getting to the point where I recovered, and I was like, yeah, once this giant fucking workload's out of the way, where I'm not just like slammed solid, and I don't have a day off until the till April or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, I was like, I'm gonna jump back in and start doing jujitsu again, and it all fell apart. But I was really having fun with jujitsu because I've trained. Uh, I trained in Taekwondo most of my life, and then um, I also started doing Kempo when my mid twenties. When I started doing it with P90X, there's a Kempo exercise oh, okay. on there, and I got really into that. I had a lot of fun with it, and I still like to throw the Kempo video on and fuck with it. Uh, as a matter of fact, I might even do that tomorrow. I haven't done it in a while. Nice. And uh, the Kempo P90X video is great. So like the Taekwondo and the Kempo is great stand up, and then my buddy Lalo was teaching me the Jiu Jitsu stuff, mm-hmm. and. Um, and that combo really, you know, puts you in a good place to, to be a, f- a threat, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, it's a dangerous world out there. You gotta be prepared. Yep. So people are just gonna come at you for no reason. Yep. So yeah, I'm a, we're right at that body size. I feel like I was never big enough that people were like worried about me. Yeah. Being a threat, and I wasn't small enough to not fuck with. Like when you're in that like right in between zone, people just think they can fuck with you all the time. Yeah. So I ran into that quite a few times in life too. Yeah, yeah. Being uh, being as white and blonde and blue eyed as I am, growing up in Stockton, where it's like, and sassy and sassy, Let it run your mouth a little bit. I'm a little bit of a fucking <laughs> smartass. I like to talk shit, and uh, people like to shut me up. Yep. Uh, so no, um, no. You know, I got fucked with a lot growing up. So uh, it was just something we had to deal with, and it was all, we were always getting into fights, always getting into fucking fights. So I'm not gonna let you fuck with me. You know. Right. If you start, if you think you're gonna pick on me because I'm a nerd, you fucking pick the wrong guy. You know, you should go pick on that guy, and I'll let you know. And then they go, "Oh, you think you're tough? No, but I can fuck you up." <laughs> you know. My last three fights I was in it was like me versus multiple assailants. Yeah. It was a bunch of tow truck jackawabies, and then it was a bunch of bouncers. And what was the last one? Some other dickheads, but yeah. it always ended up me versus like two or three people. I always came out on top, but I always ended up messing, having to talk to the police. <laughs> if two or three people, if two or three people are attacking you at the same time, none of them know how to fight. Yeah, people who know how to fight don't do that shit. Yeah, the they bouncer don't. one was the funnest when they were actually trying to take me out back and like jump me basically. Yeah, and uh, I wiggled, I wiggled free, and I was rocking them, dude. Yeah, he was coming up. They had they thrown me against the car, and he was coming up to finally, you know, get me. And I wiggled an arm free, cracked him. I'm swinging these guys around. And I just knew I was. I just knew that at that far point it was an unfair fight because I said I'm leaving. They told me to leave. It was a really dumb reason, and he's uh-huh. touching me. I'm like, dude, I'll just walk out. And uh, then he follows me out of the room. And he goes, oh, so I'm a faggot, and like pushes me. And I was like, yeah. 
And then I just like when at that point when you I'm already out of your establishment and then you follow me out of your yeah. establishment it's to like, restart oh. the whole fight. And then I was like, that was fair game. Yeah, and I just let's cracked do this. him, dude. Yep. You have no authority in the parking lot. Yeah. I'm gonna fuck your mouth. Luckily that one ended though with uh I get slammed against the. I, I kind of was like swinging these guys around, like I said, like it was, it was starting to turn into that brawl situation. And all of a sudden, I get slammed against the wall, like, I'm a cop. This is a taser. You know, like it fell in my rib cage. And I was like, oh, blue guys are here. That's cool. I'm, I'm ready to calm down. Like, yeah. I'm just not going to let three bouncers jump me because they feel macho today. Yeah. That place ended up getting shut down, though, too, because someone like stabbed and murdered a bouncer there. So I'm sure it was like the same fucking douchebags that going out to fuck with people going and he's like uh, this is why i carry a knife on me for people just like you <laughs> like yeah. so you know i get that bouncers got to do what they got to do but if you're out there to just like try to start fights with people it's probably a bad idea i really want a pistol like distance taser you know the one with the big yellow block on the front yes oh my god that's t- that's scarier than a gun to me because if you point a gun i mean you're right like People point a gun at you, right? They're not going to pull the fucking trigger. They're not going to. Uh, I mean, they might. They might. But if they keep talking about it, they're not. They're not fucking going to shoot if you. If it comes out and they're firing it right away. If then they were going to fucking shoot you, yeah. they would already shot you, right? Yep. They're threatening you to try to get you to do what they want. But with yeah. that little yellow block on the front, <laughs> oh, I'm fucking dying to pull the trigger. And you know it, <laughs> right? Like, I, you pull that out, it's just like, I ain't fucking playing. <laughs> Give me a reason. Please let me use this toy on you. <laughs> Zap. Yeah. And uh, that's ter- That's more terrifying than anything to me. If you see that fucking little yellow bro- block on the front of a fucking taser pistol, they're like a couple grand for one of those things. Fuck it. You know? But, uh, I, but I really want to carry one of those, man. Those are like, cause I'll just fucking shoot you. Like, in a, I don't even need. Now I, <laughs> I want to make you piss your pants. Now you don't even get to touch me, right? <laughs> like I don't have to use any any martial arts training or any of this fucking. I you know I work out all the time. I try to fucking try to self defense, whatever, to so protect myself. I don't fucking deal with that. I now. mean, your hands. Do you really want to fuck your hands? I up don't want to fight yeah. people. I don't. I like rolling. I think rolling's a lot of fun. I don't. We don't need to get violent. I'm not a fucking teenager anymore. I don't have anything to prove to anybody either. You know, like no, yeah, for I, real. I I'm not out trying to be a tough guy or like trying to be a tough guy on the podcast talking about fighting but like you know i love to roll i love to spar i love to exercise and train Mm -hmm. but like when it comes to the real world i really don't want to roll with some dude i don't know on the ground who might have a knife on him or something or any of that shit you just don't want to come up with insufficient funds if shit goes down yeah i would just rather remove myself from that situation and watch you piss all over yourself while you (laughs) fucking convulse on the ground because you're an asshole and you were coming to assault me and everyone saw it and i'm gonna shoot you and I think that's fucking hilarious to me. And um, yeah, I really want to. What get about one. some of these ones? I have you... a co- I have a couple tasers, but they're not the gun one that I can hit you from a distance. What about these ones? Though some of these ones, these guys are so jacked up that they're hitting them with tasers and they're still coming. Yeah, well, that's where you gotta fucking. <laughs> that's why you still have to train in jujitsu and know how to yeah. choke someone out because it doesn't matter how many fucking muscles you have. I can still ch- fucking wrap my arm around your throat and right. cut off the circulation air to your brain. I mean, I can do that to anybody. It doesn't matter how fucking strong they are. I just got to make sure they don't hit me before I do it. <laughs> right, right. It's like my brother Chad. Uh, if I got in a fight with him, I'd definitely do my best to try to gas him. But, of course, <laughs> I told him that like an idiot. Now he fucking runs every day because he knows that I was like, <laughs> oh, the strategy of, against you is to gas your fucking big ass because you got so many muscles. And he's like, oh, that's a good point. Running all the time now. Cardio Fuck! time. Fuck! <laughs> so I'm like, I gotta get back into jujitsu because if I mean that dude's a monster. If, if someone like Chad size hit me in the fucking mouth, yeah, like full on, right? And he connected. I mean, I'm going to the hospital. My jaw is gonna be dislocated. I'm gonna be unconscious. I don't need that. I don't I fucking don't need, need that. that. I'm lucky. I have chin. Yeah, I, I can take a punch all day long. I can I definitely take a punch, but I mean, um, fucking my brother's just so big. I mean, that's just that. There's that good, masochist inside of me. Just there's so much power. <laughs> just that masochist. Yeah, like I remember. Um, you can do it harder. Like working in bars, right? So I've been in a million fucking fights working in bars all my whole life, right? Right. And um, and I've been jumped a bunch of times by fucking college kids, dumbass drunks that are fucking up partying, and they can't fight, and we fuck them all up, and we throw them out, and like. I mean, my shirt gets ripped or something. You know what I mean? It's like, it's funny how it goes that way. Right. But like, I, yeah, I remember um, I got punched in the back of the head by some dude at a bar we were throwing out, right? Like I was trying to calm his friend down. Um, and this other guy snuck around behind me and just sucker punched me in the back of the head as we were trying to t- like defuse the situation without throwing blows. Yeah. 
And I just laughed so hard and turned around, and that dude shit his fucking pants because he hit me as hard as he could, <laughs> you know, right in the back of the head. And all it did was make me you, smile. Yeah, and you'd think that you you wind up like that on somebody that yeah. you're going to knock him out or knock him down like in the movies, right? <laughs> yeah, oh, I just started walking towards him. I was like, oh, this guy can't hit for shit. And so I just put my arms down, like hit me again because I'm coming. And uh, and I started walking towards the motherfucker and he starts backing up, backing up, backing up, backing up, backing up. I was like, what the fuck? I thought we were fighting, you know? Like you Same hit me Zuma already. Class. Yeah. And he like runs on the other side of a cab. And then the cab takes off, and he just runs as fast as he can. <laughs> and I was like, you fuck. I, mean, we, I didn't even have to do anything. It was just take the hit and then turn around and be like, that's really all you got? Because, wow. like I said, I grew up with Chad, right? Like, oh, yeah. Getting your ass just, We would just beat the fuck out of each other. That's good. And not only it's that, good for you. We, did, uh, we used to do Fight Club. When Fight Club came out, <laughs> right? We were just like, oh, shit. And then we hey, had the it. first. You're breaking the first rule of Fight Club. Ah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'd have a sand pit in the backyard. So, and, uh... And we would beat the living shit out of each other. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, um, you know, we would do like bare knuckle, but no face shots kind of thing. Or right, like we right. have boxing gloves on. Um, and then there was like bare knuckle fucking beat, fucking hit each other in the yep. face, you know, like yep. no rules. But like it just it escalated, you know, until and like <laughs> I remember like <laughs> me and my buddy, I was fighting people every day at that fucking thing. And I'm, uh, me and my buddy Mike did this thing where we would tie our wrists together so like i'd grab i'd grab his fucking wrist he'd grab my fucking wrist and then they'd fucking they wrap a belt around us and fucking cinch it or you know like mm -hmm. really strap us together so like we're hooked to each other ready one two three fight it's just like, almost like a hockey fight yeah yeah it's like yeah. a hockey fight yeah, 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 yeah. Beat the fuck out of each other what <laughs> fucking trying not to get hit yeah dumbass kids dumbass kids Speaking but that's what we were doing for fun Speaking of hockey, were you into the the Knights really or is, I know sports ball's never really been your thing, right? No, I'm not a sports fan, man. Yeah. I like games and I appreciate sports for sure. Like right. like highlights come on and athleticism and all that stuff. But like um I just love that something that like Vegas had something to rally behind. And I like, love we, that too. Yeah, we always like we always deserve to have a professional sport. And now yeah. we're gonna have two, which is great, but it's just like I loved how our city embraced him when they came here and yeah. it was the perfect timing with gosh the crazy october one shooting and all that and the, it just the town embraced them they embraced the town and it was like they made that stanley cup run i mean yeah. it was like that was some magical sports shit i feel that, like that's the, that's the stuff documentaries are made out of you know it's just like this beautiful story of like year one yeah a bunch of misfits right i just thought it's, it's see, one of the best just sports so stories fake to me you like, think so yeah like i don't know anything right like yeah. i can't say for sure but like they just came together like I, I mean a team sport right requires a lot of like building and team effort and like mm -hmm. knowing each other and for five guys that came from all different places or whatever or however many you know like the whole team or whatever but you know or this group of cl guys that came from all over the place to just like dominate the league like that I feel uh, like it wasn't like it got, it got dominating in the in the end. Yeah, right. It's like we'll we'll get them to the fucking we'll we'll push them into the finals and or into the semifinals and if they make the Stanley Cup, great. Literally kind three of, of the guys had seas career seasons. Oh yeah, that's rare. Yeah, and they all were like forty points plus. You know, like yeah. for your assists and your goals and stuff. Yeah, and Carlson was like number three in the league. Mm. He hasn't even been able to repeat that yet. Like yeah, so. I feel it was, like it was a lightning striking moment for I think it's kind of the idea when like you get an eighth seed and you got nothing to lose and sometimes they get you know the Pistons versus the Celtics or whatever or like yeah. someone versus Golden State where like number eight just comes out rocking because they got nothing to lose they're the underdog right and yeah. it's almost like we had kept that mentality the whole time even though we were winning we were still the underdog I mean we started the whole season at like five hundred to one odds of winning the whole thing yeah and win all the way so i just think when you get that that dog fight in you and 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 the coach was kind of a reject too i don't know if you heard the story uh, -uh. uh where you know he was the the florida coach and they just left him and the assistant on the side of the road and just left town wow really like like so it was like literally like it's kind of like the forgotten children right the bastards so to speak all coming together and picked up on that energy with the, the coach the culture must have been like that right yeah with just kind of like with the expansion draft and all that it's kind of like you're you're the second hand people yeah. right so yeah for a team like that to go all the way to the finals yeah it just seems to me personally too good to be true in like what a realistic awesome. world right like that's just not how 
it would ever actually work out, but it did. And like yeah. you see that a lot in sports too, where getting flurry though the goalie they was kind clutch. of yeah. they kind of create this storyline with their it's it's as, as far as i'm concerned professional sports is professional wrestling it's all scripted it's all bullshit like uh, it's not not all of it's scripted neither yeah. is professional wrestling right? right like maybe who wins or loses is scripted but they actually go out and fight like, right well they not fight but they do this gymnastic routine that's amazing and uh and it's very athletic struggle snuggle yeah and uh i think sports are <laughs> sports not all the time of course but i think like i think a um uh, there's a there's a word for it i'm i'm not finding it in my brain but uh I think they just they're creating this narrative. Mm-hmm. They're creating this narrative to kind of get people interested in things, right? Well, and yeah. um, and certain things happen, like um, this this right when like Katrina happened, the Saints won the Super Bowl, right? Uh, I believe a year or two after. Was it a year or two after? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But uh, well, they I were good. I mean, they were built. Yeah. I mean, they got yeah. Drew Brees and. They were building that team, and it's kind of like, you know, you've done music your whole life. Yeah. You know how many rotating guys you've had in and out of your bands? You know, maybe you have you and one other main guy or the writer. Like, uh, let's say Anthony, I feel like always been pretty solid. Like, you and Anthony, and then you have, like, rotating guys kind of coming in and out. And then all of a sudden, you just get that click when the five guys kind of come together that it just works so yeah. good. That's what all these football teams are trying to do or these hockey teams. Yeah. Somebody, have you been watching any of the, the Michael Jordan story? No. Uh, the, What's up with the Michael Jordan story? On the ESPN is the the Last Dance. So it was like the they started following them with a crew on the championship run for the sixth championship. <coughs> Excuse me. And it was known that Phil uh, Phil Jackson was not coming back. Like no matter what happened after this season, like Phil Jackson will not be the coach of the Bulls anymore. So he made it called the Last Dance. It's uh-huh. Michael Jordan and all that, but it's really cool. Well, I forget why I even just brought it up because um, we're talking about narratives, but. How it breaks down, it, it it breaks down like MJ. Oh, so Pippen Pippen was hurt. We all know that was like his number two, and it's like when he was hurt for the first three months, they were struggling. You know, they got off to a really rocky start. Rodman really had to step up. It just goes to show you like what it takes to keep that. And Steve Kerr, who's the coach yeah. of the Goat Warriors now and all that, like how awesome of a team that was. Yeah. I mean, but and then uh, me and my cousin will talk about 90s ball all the time, like, because you have the Rockets with Olajuwon and Clyde Drexler and all these badasses. And Seattle Seahawks, or Supersonics had Gary Payton and Sean, Sean Kipp, the Phoenix Suns. I'm a, I'm a big Phoenix Suns fan. I remember yeah. we lost to them, right? The Suns like be 93, my basketball team. Right? And so that was like, Danny Ainge came from the Celtics. You had Danny Ainge, like Charles Barkley, Kevin Johnson, like, Dude, like everybody in the, it was stacked, bro. And then you had the nasty, nasty Pistons. You know, the Pacers were badass. The Celtics were always badass. And the fucking Bulls. And for the Dubs. Bulls to win six of the championships in the 90s when all those teams were stacked like that, yeah. that even tells you even more like see, now that, how good that fucking team was, you know, see, and how good MJ that was. That kind of shit is yeah. believable. Yeah. A team reaches a certain point and they become fucking unstoppable like mm-hmm. the, the Patriots with Drew Brees and all that right mm-hmm. the Patriots winning the Super Bowl is not a surprise to anybody right you know, the, the Bulls in the 90s winning uh, the fucking championship it's not a surprise to anybody you know what I mean but like but you had to see him get over the hurdle which yeah. is what I liked you saw him lose to the Pistons twice those nasty fucking Pistons that had Rodman yeah they got Rodman from the Pistons to come on that was for the the second uh, the second three-peat but they had to get to that first championship. They had to lose some gruesome fucking series to the Pistons twice. Who went on to win the championship? They won back to backs. Yeah. So it, that night, that whole era, man, eighty nine, ninety, and then the Bulls finally got it ninety one, right? Yeah. Like I think you enjoy it. I mean, yeah. I know you're not here, but uh, seeing how when you get the right, you got managers and you've got coach and you've got the rotating people because uh mj was now the star but he didn't have a pippin yet they didn't get pip until after him and how it takes time to get a couple pieces coming in yeah right i think that was my point of it all and that's uh, where the unbelievableness comes in right because yeah. you're competing against these fucking teams that have been building themselves up mm-hmm. into this fucking superstardom and they're just a well-oiled machine and you're just with this ragtag bunch of guys coming at them right and it's just like oh we're just gonna take everything with this ragtag bunch of guys it just seems so unlikely but they're still all pros yeah they are still all pros and um but then it's like um like the one sport i do like watching is football because mm-hmm. it's very strategic like it's like we put our pieces on the board and we move in this way and this is the attempt we're gonna make and it's not right. like it's not just guys running back and forth 
playing a sports game, right? Uh, and so I enjoy that. But um, I see it more in football than anything, obviously, because that's what I watch, mm-hmm. uh, where the refs just decide the game. They yeah. just go, ah, we're going to fuck that team. We're going to ruin their – We're going to. anytime they gain momentum, we're going to make a shitty call. There's too we're many crucial fuck ones. their momentum. Yep. We're going to make sure the ball goes back to the other team. Then we're going to make a shitty call against their defense as well, make sure they get some points on them. Mm-hmm. And it's just like – this is where I say I, when I watch sports, I feel like I'm watching professional wrestling. I feel like the entire season is already like mm. – they're, they're picking some things they want to happen, and they're kind of – trying to get that to go because they know they'll get more people to watch yeah and unfortunately, they know they'll sell more merch the ref situation in nfl has getting harder for me to watch that's why it's uh, rough hockey's gotten a lot more of a forefront for me for Rest, watching refs will ruin the whole fucking game yeah they'll take a whole fucking game it's just like did you really just make that fucking call was that necessary to make that fucking call right like especially after something else just happened right and you're not calling on on the other team but then you're calling this little minor bullshit on these guys and it's just like i mean it could it just seems so fucking obvious that they're fucking them right, right. like you watch the game and you're just like you're ruining this game you're ruining it. They're not even. This isn't even fair anymore. Oh yeah, I mean, gosh, the the Rams and the Saints one, right? Where yeah. that pass interference was so bad that they yeah. like literally made a pass interference challenge yeah. the following year, but none of them really were overturned. So I yeah. don't know. They just did it to appease everything. Yeah. So. But you can easily change the fucking. You can easily change the flow of a game just by oh, making yeah. a couple bad calls. Yeah. And and slowing the momentum down mm-hmm. on one person's team or the other, and and that changes the outcome of the entire fucking season. Yeah, uh, and and it, it. Whenever I watch, whenever I sit down and watch games, that's what I see. They're trying to bring like NBA and NHL back just to try to finish the season with everything going on. Oh, really? And they uh, actually, what's today? It's the weekend, so they were supposed to have voted on Friday for the NHLPA. Like they're talking about doing like a twenty-four team playoff okay. format, so some like maybe some one and dones and stuff like that. So it should be interesting to see what happens. That, is, that will be interesting. But on that note, I'm going to grab my beer out of the fridge if you want to well, cut actually, to a commercial. No, or, on that note, we're at like two hours, man. Oh, are we? Let's just call it. Yeah. Man. That went that long, that quick? We're two hours. I told you, right? I was like, it just goes. We start talking and two hours happens. Like, Fuck. Yeah, yeah. When I tell people 30 minutes, they're like, how are we going to talk for 30 minutes? And then it's just like, that was we two just hours. fucking did that four times. That was two hours. Yeah. Damn. All right. One hour, 55 minutes on the fucking clock right now. Well, so um, on that note, on that note, it's been great having you here, and of course yeah. we'll have you back anytime you're in fucking town. Hit me up. Let's come back on the podcast and talk some more shit. Hell yeah, I'll bring little Steven next time. Let him tell some poop jokes. I love that. That's a great <laughs> idea. Bring both of them, man. Bring oh, both. Yeah. Of them. I got them. I got multiple mics, man, and uh, we can like put them on that couch and put a camera on them, <laughs> and then me and you can be on this side and we can just fucking chat at the fucking boys and talk shit. It'd be yeah. fun. All right. So yeah, no, it'd, it'd be great, man. Fucking uh, and yeah, bring the fucking wife too, man. We'll have a barbecue afterwards or something. Hell yeah. Yeah. So and if you're if you're hanging out, I think Ray's coming over, play some fucking cards, and I'm gonna, I got some chicken to throw on the grill. So let's do it. Maybe you know I don't even I don't know what you're up to today, but you're welcome to stay and hang out for some chicken. So yeah, fucking a bro. Right on. I'll um I'll close this thing up. America. He's been to the fullest with Jason Frober. I really want to thank my guest Stephen Jensen. He's been uh, a great time talking to you, my brother. All right, thanks, buddy. Peace. Peace. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my podcast. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here. We are a new podcast every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.